Hitchot. Sniper's a good job, mate. It's challenging work, out of doors. I guarantee you'll not go hungry, because at the end of the day, long as there's two people left on the planet, someone is going to want someone dead. <laughs> Praise gunman, Dad. I'm an assassin. Well, the difference being one is a job and the other's mental sickness. I'll be honest with you. My parents do not care for it. I think his mate saw me. Yes, yes, he did. Feelings? Look, mate, you know who has a lot of feelings? Blokes were bludgeoning their wife to death with a golf trophy. Professionals have standards. Be polite. Be efficient. Have a plan to kill everyone you meet. Dad. Dad, put the... Put mum on a phone. Birds, that's our word, brought to you by Conker's Bad Fur Day, now available for the Nintendo 64. Uh, no rights reserved, but all mites reserved. I did it! The first take! Nailed it! Yes! It's about time. The new intro has been fucking me up. <laughs> and I'm here with Jeremy Heisenberger, and I'm Court Jim Jesus. How are you doing, man? Oh, I am, I'm just lovely, Jim. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> that's the biggest little shit I ever heard. Uh, I am spectacular, loving life. Oh, everything is grand. <laughs> but all the trees smell like cum. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> old dried cum. <laughs> old dried mastodon cum. That's oh, what it smells shit. like. Elephant cum. <laughs> it's always coming. It always comes back to Freddie got fingered with me, doesn't it? Uh, anyways. <laughs> So uh, before we get into your um, your gloomy gl- Gus story, before we turn you into Eeyore, uh, we, should talk about, <laughs> we were talking about video games earlier, and I was like, we should be recording this. This, this is great. Um, See, this is why I hit the record button as soon as somebody hops online with me, because I learned a long time ago <laughs> that I miss some of the greatest conversations when I don't do that. So you recorded that? I didn't know. Oh, uh, so it's when, I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I'm the one recording the show. Sorry, okay. I should, I should, I should clarify. Yeah, if I'm recording the show, as soon as like I when I get on when I when I set things up and I wait for everybody to join me on whatever service we're using, as soon as the first person hops <laughs> on, I hit the record button. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so shop talk. Um, so yeah, we were talking about like how we're both retro gamers. Um, we both like enjoy older games. I like yeah. some newer games. But not as much as I would like to go back and like revisit things. And like my favorite console of all time by far is the Intellivision. And and most people are like, what the fuck is the Intellivision? <laughs> but um, but it's the one, it, it actually competed with the NES for a while, even though it's a first generation console. Um, but you were telling me that you were getting into, that you are into Final Fantasy right now, nine. Or, yes. And I think that was yeah. for PlayStation Two. I th- I think I'm pretty sure it was a PS One game. I can't remember. I was, that's what I was telling you because I buy I don't buy I don't I obviously don't buy discs anymore. I buy whatever I can get on the uh, PlayStation Store, and it's very rare because I w- I haven't been playing games. But yeah, the, it was for PlayStation the, One. Yeah, it's my thought. Yeah, because okay. you could t- yeah, yeah looking at the graphics that kind of makes sense. Um, but yeah, I was uh I was a huge. Uh, you know, I, I think I've talked about. I think I might have talked about the, on this show before. Um, Final Fantasy VII to this day is still my favorite game of all time, um, and I had actually replayed it a couple of years ago when I first got back into gaming after my kid after I had given up when I when I had kids and I was a little too busy, and then uh, they got a little older and started doing more things on their own, and I had a little more free time, so I started playing again, and I decided to play Final Fantasy VII. And after I was done, a bunch of my friends were like. So did so. What about the other ones? Have you ever played the other ones? And I was like, yeah, I you know I I jumped from seven to ten or X or whatever they called it, and played all those ones that got crappier and crappier as the systems got better and the graphics got better, the games got worse, <laughs> um, unfortunately. But I played all those, 
but I had skipped right over eight and nine for some reason. And uh, last year I got around to playing eight. And then my two friends, my same two friends, it was actually Dave and Andre from Seas of Liberty kept bugging me. They're like, you got to try nine, man. Nine, nine's really the shit. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, nothing could compete with seven. Well, I don't know about that anymore, man. Nine is pretty fucking cool. <laughs> okay. um, um, I, I, should, I shouldn't have waited this long to play it, but it's a really cool game. I, I'm definitely digging it. Yeah. I never really got too much into role-playing stuff. I never even played the original Final Fantasies that were on, what, Super Nintendo? I believe it was the first batch of them, the, if I recall correctly. The, the first one might have been on the NES. I don't even... Well, let's find yeah, out they, since I have the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might. I'm trying to remember because I remember. I, I know I, da- I, I yeah, because I, I dated a girl uh, back in the day who was a huge gamer, and she actually used to make fun of me for the fact that seven was my favorite game, but I had never played one through six <laughs> because she had she had played all of them, and she actually, I think she tried. I think three was her favorite. She tried to get me to play that one, and I actually kind of dug the storyline of that. But going back that far with the graphics is kind of difficult sometimes <laughs> you know when you get the little blob on the screen that's yeah. just basically bouncing up and down <laughs> when you're used to walking around at the, the skirt you know when you do like the open uh, the open area games like like our like that like final fantasy is where you can walk anywhere um you're used to seeing a little man walking and now you're going back to like looking at, like this little blob with kind of looks like legs <laughs> just shuffling box to box to box to box to box yeah. across the screen it gets a little tedious so i couldn't go that far back but nine yeah man the story is great the uh, the gameplay is great they it seems like because they, they they tried to do this thing with a bunch of the games where they try to start adding in all these different side quests and uh other things to make the game more interesting or i guess last longer and a lot of them fell flat this one they apparently got it right because they had this card game that um is really annoying to play but they actually made this one completely optional you don't really like there's no like unless you want to get 100 percent completion on the game which i really have no interest in doing um you you know you don't have to play the card game at all i'm like finally they got something right because <laughs> usually they have this and it's like well if you want if you want the ultimate weapons you've got to play this stupid fucking game for 30 <laughs> fucking hours <laughs> That doesn't net you anything but the goddamn weapon. You don't get any more experience points. You don't get more any, any more ability points. But you waste thirty fucking hours doing this shit. So they got it right. With, they got it right with nine, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, never got into. There was a couple of role playing games that I really got into, like obsession level, got into for a while, and that was Chrono Trigger. Uh, but it's really easy. So like after you beat it, you're kind of like, okay done playing that forever and then uh, shadow run which is a great one because you can still go back to that one there's there's all kinds of fun to be had with that one uh, the original one the, they had it on sega but i had it for nes and that game was fucking amazing um other than that no, didn't really get into it didn't even like super mario rpg that was really popular for a while tried it yeah i never and, played that one yeah so never really got into that but um uh Lately, I've been playing a lot of Team Fortress 2. <laughs> I used to play Team Fortress on Quake. This is how this is how deep I go with Team Fortress. <laughs> I used to play on, when it was a mod for Quake. It took me forever to figure out how to bind keys and shit in order to make it work. And that's when every, that's when they had grapple hooks and stuff, and you could you know shoot through the air like Spider Man. That was a whole lot of fun. Um, and then bunny hopping in the in the Half Life Two version, and now the new one is fucking amazing uh even though it's been around for 10 years i don't know how new it is team fortress 2 uh i've been playing that a lot lately and it's almost becoming an <laughs> another habit but you know i'm still just mad that i can't get conquer's bad fur day which is arguably like my not arguably it is my most favorite game of all time you know i've heard you mention this one before and i don't remember this game at all yeah it really <laughs> like, went under the radar it was like a very tight-knit community of people that were that knew about it and, and loved it and anytime they heard it like anytime <laughs> they could they would de- like evangelize about it but the word of mouth wasn't that big i guess at the time so it would kind of fledge and it's kind of hard to find copies at a decent price um you know in 64 games you can buy cheap as hell because it hasn't really reached that legendary status in the collector world yet. So finding games on it can be pretty cheap, but it was just a rare game that it, it just it just wasn't that popular. But it by far was it was the most offensive game <laughs> for, for the N64. Like there was cussing in it. 
Like one of the missions, you had to jump on a sunflower's tits in order to get the money. <laughs> um, and that was after you got a bee to quote unquote pollinate her. Uh, nice. <laughs> so it was just, it was pretty bizarre. Like some of the some of the stuff on there was really adult themed, but it was it didn't get an AO rating. They still bleeped out the F word. I think they said shit. I don't remember. But I remember there was a big scene where you had to f- fight a giant turd. And, <laughs> and it sang opera at you. I mean, it was it was a fantastic game. A lot of like pop culture references in it. There was a, there was a uh, part in it where you were going through the bait. You know, the, the very well, the very end of the Matrix. You know, the decent one, I guess. Uh, <laughs> the watchable yeah. one. Um, Wait a minute. Where, Wait a minute. There was a decent one? Yeah. Well, just a, <laughs> there's a watchable one. Let's put it that way. There's two watchable ones. Um, but uh, the first Matrix where they go into like the bank thing and they have the shootout. There's like a scene oh, in that where you're doing yes. that. Um, you shoot out, you do out that scene, which is, that was fun. Um, there's like an alien scene at the very end. <laughs> Um, where you fight a xenomorph, it's 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 a fun game, and it's not Sounds available anywhere. Yeah, you, you, I don't think you could get it on the virtual console uh, for the Wii or the Wii U. It wasn't available on that. It um, there's, we still don't get a virtual console yet for the uh, Switch, which I'm dying for it to come out so I can get some old games. Hopefully, conquer. Well, didn't, isn't the isn't the Switch like very recent to begin with? Uh-huh. Didn't it just come out like last year or yeah. maybe two years ago? So came out, give him a little time. I think it came out this year. No, what was it? I don't know. Jeez, like, now you're having me searching. I, I, thought it, I, I thought it was end of 2017, but again, I, I've been out of the gaming world for so long. I like, you know, I like to play these old games because yeah, I still have year. a P. The, the only the only system I still own is a PS3, and the the only reason I've even been tempted to purchase anything else is because I did hear there was a couple of games that people were telling me about that were coming out for the PS4 that I guess uh, PlayStation finally said yeah we're not gonna put these games out for the PS3 anymore so you gotta you know you gotta upgrade if you want them yeah. and I was like tempted you know <laughs> that that was the reason I ended up with a GameCube back in the day because I think I was saying before we started the show I mean I I, I became a PlayStation guy as soon as the first one came out. And I jump, I jump ship from my SNES to that, and never look back, except for the GameCube blip when they came out with the uh, Resident Evil Six. I think was the one that came yeah, out. Resident Evil Cube. games were fun. Yeah, wh- whichever, whichever one, whichever one it was. I think it was Six at the time. They originally said they weren't going to put it out for the PlayStation. Uh, Nintendo had the ex- exclusive rights to it, so they put it out for the GameCube. And I went to a buddy's house and saw the graphics on it. You know, this is still back when I was rocking a PS1 or a PS2 or whatever. And I saw the graphics. I'm like, I need that. I'm like, I have to have this game in my life. And I hadn't even been a big Resident Evil fan before that. Like, I had played, like, I had played two, and I think I maybe played four. And I liked them. They were cool. But I wasn't, like, like hardcore into them like some of my friends were. But I was like, I need this game in my fucking life. And I went out and bought a GameCube just to have that. And then, sure enough, I think six months later... They were like, no, nah, we're going to put out for the PS for the PlayStation anyway. I'm like, you <laughs> fucking son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> Nintendo. Although the, 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 the GameCube version ended up being better anyway. Like okay. the, the add-ons they put on on the PS version weren't enough to to, up, uh, to to take over the graphics on the GameCube because the graphics were so much better. Yeah, And that GameCube controller was awesome. Hmm. I will give it that. I yes. never I never had a GameCube, but I probably should have because I kind of... I got I got the Xbox and I loved my Xbox and you were talking about the controller, the Duke controller hated the, hated, the, it. hated the big Xbox controller hated it. But you know at the time I was really playing bass and my, my hands haven't changed since, uh, so they were I had I had big hands to begin with and you know the stubby fingers from playing bass. So small controllers don't really work for me. The Switch controller, I, weirdly enough, works for me. I don't know. How, Everybody complains about it being too small, but it works for me. But um, so I had like these big hands, and when they came out for it, I was like, "This is perfect." And then all of my friends were like, "Fuck this controller!" I was like, "Really? <laughs> I love this controller." Oh yeah. And I, I, I was like, oh, I fine, I'll get a couple too. small ones. Yeah. So I got some small ones for my friends, but I, I was like, "This this new controller, this one's mine." <laughs> <laughs> and no one yeah, had a problem I, with it. <laughs> I, I wouldn't you. have either. Yeah. Yeah, like, I have big hands though. That's the thing I don't understand. Like, I have pretty big hands. I just, for some reason, that controller. I think it was. The, I think it was the addition of the buttons. I think that's what it was. Like the extra buttons just really bugged oh, me. Oh, the, the black hell and out. white like, ones. Yeah, and the, the positioning of everything. Because yeah, because I was coming when when the Xbox rolled around. I guess I was still rocking my SNES. So yeah, 
so I was used to that controller setup, and I was just like, yeah, I can't do this. <laughs> this is this is too much for me to relearn right now. <laughs> just to play games I already know how to play, much less play new games. I'm like, fuck this. Yeah, but I love that. I love that controller. It's, it's probably one of my favorite controllers. I really did like the the GameCube. Uh, GameCube. Um, well, yeah, the GameCube controller is great. I really like the um, uh, the uh, uh, Dreamcast controller. But it, I have to admit, it wasn't comfortable. But I, I liked it. I liked the way it looked, and you had you had the little video game that you can pull out of it. You know, the little memory card had like a had a little controller on it. You can play little miniature games with it. That was a whole lot of fun. But after Xbox, I ended up selling off my Xbox to one of my friends because I was just like, I can't do console games anymore. I just I just like playing uh, like things like Counter Strike and stuff, like the original Counter Strike when it was a mod for for Half Life. And I was like, yeah, I'm just I'm just much more into PC gaming. So I kind of sold it off and never looked back at console gaming. But the, the consoles, but the one console company that I keep going back to is Nintendo because Nintendo is just they're really kind of innovative and they really do different things with their consoles. It's not it's they don't really compete with PlayStation or Xbox. They don't. It's a completely different beast. Yeah, not anymore. I mean, yeah. back in the day when when PlayStation when PlayStation, yeah. PlayStation and Xbox were first sur- starting to surge. They mm-hmm. they definitely were. Like I remember when the GameCube came out, it was it was hyped as you know the competition, and uh, yeah. But now you're right. I mean, even though I don't pay that much attention, just a little bit, I do know everything I hear from everybody is always like positive about like how Nintendo is like just like completely um, gone its own path yeah. and continue to ki- and continue to kick ass i mean like how many years down the road now i mean that company's been around forever yeah. <laughs> the, wii, the wii u did not do well but um like the gamecube it seems like that's when they were like all right let's try some other things with this that's when they started trying to get like a little bit innovative with it um it was like the little twinkle uh, especially with that controller but the wii U, the wii is when when they came out with that they were like okay we're going to go on a different path we're not even going to try to compete with with them we're not going to worry about graphics or anything we're just going to worry about like things to have fun with and the wii controller was so fucking awesome <laughs> i could i could still i'm still waiting for bowling to come out on the switch if when bowling comes out like my life is over forget it you're i'm quitting podcasting <laughs> Just gonna do that. Oh forever. wait a minute! This, so see, I, see, I haven't, I, I didn't, I didn't have either of those systems. So this, but this, the switch. Well, I don't have. Well, I don't have the switch. Rather, I should say, because it's a newer system. But so that one works like the Wii, where you could do the the, yeah. the movement controllers too. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can t- um, you can unlock those little those little controllers that are on the side of the screen, uh, and and use it like that. And you can also dock it and just play with the with the little mini controllers too. And it, on oh, your TV, I see. So. It's well, technically see, it's, it, a console, but you can take it to go. Nice. But the back, battery life is, is garbage on it. But Well, that's, you know. Because it has to run a fan. Yeah. It has. Well, yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> that should be expected with what actually has to be done there. But, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, funny, it's funny, though, because you say that because, um, you know, you're talking about how, you know, pretty much with the GameCube, Nintendo is like, yeah. And then once the Wii, like, yeah, we're going to go in our own direction. And that's when and that's when PlayStation and Xbox tried to scramble to do. They were like, well, fuck, now we got to catch up. Yeah. And their versions. <laughs> I never played the Wii. I, I have the PlayStation, the Move, is it? Was that their version? I forget. With the little glowing their, wand the, thing? Yeah, their glowing wand thing. It sucks. <laughs> like, I've never played the Wii, and I know the Wii's better. <laughs> like, I still have them only because I, le- I let my kids play with them last year, and they kind of got into it. And I was like, well, if they're still going to want to use them, then I'll keep them. Because I actually, I, w- I had, like, I really wanted that thing to be great. Like, that was at a, when that came out, that was at a point that I was still, like, really heavy into gaming. And I had friends who had the Wii, and I was like, nah, man. I'm like, I'm going to get the PlayStation Move. And, like, they got all these other cooler games. Like, I went out. I have four of those fucking those stupid wands. <laughs> I made sure I had enough for a whole party of people to come over. I <laughs> four wands, two, two double um, uh, uh, charging stations. <laughs> but see what the problem was with that is that there wasn't bowling. If there was Wii bowling for it, it would have been it would have been game over for Nintendo, but they were smart. yeah because the I, I I played a couple of the bowling games. The, the one bowling game I, ha- I actually have the physical disc still. I think one of the one of the bowl, bowling games for the move that game's awesome. I just the controllers are such a pain in the ass to use, oh. um, especially with the lighting in my house. Unfortunately, <laughs> the camera does just does not pick things up well. And uh, like halfway halfway through your your uh, your your swing, all of a sudden it'll lose it'll lose you. <laughs> 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 and then you'll get an error, and it's like, God damn it! 
<laughs> so then you quickly go to throw another one and it's like gut, gutter ball I'm like motherfucker yeah i got really good at, at wee bowling like when you watch other people play it you know they do the whole swinging of the arm and everything i i never i didn't have to do that well i did do it to begin with but then i started getting really good at it and i figured out you don't have to do all that all you have to do is just kind of i don't swing my arm at all i'll just kind of turn the controller down just a little bit until he swings back and then i'll do like this little shake i'll just shake it <laughs> and then the per- the ball just gets like a perfect uh perfect uh what is it called I don't know what what it is in bowling with the with the ball kind of curves around hook yeah hook. hook it does a perfect hook nearly strikes every time never got a perfect game but I was getting close to it <laughs> like I was I was no one wanted to play at my house with me because it was like Jim just gonna just annihilate all of us so what's the point <laughs> <laughs> see that, that's funny I, you I guys can fight I never... for a second how about that. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never bothered to look for any like hacks or anything like that because I, I naturally do the arm swing thing because that's how I bowl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I, I actually took, I, one of one of my many trips to uh, the local community college back in the day, <laughs> in like the three, the three attempts I went there to try to get some degree in some bullshit. Um, one of the times I went there, I, I think it was when I was going after my criminal justice degree. There was, uh, there was a, there was a gym requirement. Uh, phys- you know, physical education right, requirement yeah, yeah. at the college. So, like, I looked at the list of things and I was like, oh, bowling. I can do that. <laughs> so I actually took bowling in college. Shit. Um, Maybe it I was, should it was take great. a class in bowling. I should check, <laughs> I should check. I'll pay for a class in bowling. My, 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 uh, my whatchamacallit, my, uh, yeah, my, uh, my, my score improved by, like, 70, my average improved by, like, easily by 75 pins. Nice. You know. It's been a while, but I was, you know, I was, I was, I went from being like some, somebody who like, you know, would go, would throw the ball wildly and like occasionally like with power. So like when I did connect, like, you know, strikes were easy, but like, I would often get like, you know, it'd be like a strike, spare, two, one, three, (laughs) strike, strikes, you know, like stuff like that. (laughs) And I went from doing that to like, you know, being a consistent, like 190, 200 bowler, um, just from taking just from taking a semester of bowling, and even then we screwed around the entire time. But I at least I learned the mechanics, and I figured out what I had been doing because like I used to bowl. <laughs> uh, back when I back when I was younger, I actually used to palm the ball, and still do a an extreme. I can't remember where I learned this. It was one of my other friends who had figured it out. But we could palm like the eight pound balls. And still managed to throw it with this violent hook. <laughs> <laughs> that when it connected was amazing, but other times would overshoot. Like catch, you know, you're lucky if you catch the ten pin or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's how I bowled for years <laughs> until that bowling class. Yeah, I should probably take up bowling. I really should <laughs> get, some, get some activity in. But yeah, um, so yeah, but um, yeah, in television, Nintendo. Super Nintendo. I bought. I I mowed everybody in my block's yard until I got a Super Nintendo. I was like, my parents ain't gonna buy me one. I'll fucking get one. God damn it. I need because <laughs> I need I need Mortal Kombat. I need Street Fighter. Um. So yes, I had to buy. I had to buy my own too. But I actually had a job by then, like an actual job. Because yeah. the working the working age in PA was fourteen, and I had my first job at fourteen. <laughs> I was in elementary school, so getting a proper uh, job was not in my cards. Uh, in fact, they wouldn't even, that was at the time when they were switching over from paper boys to like people throwing them out of their windows of their car. It was that kind of transition. So I was trying to get a paper boy thing and they were like, yeah, we're moving away from that model. Sorry. When, and I was like, fuck. Yeah. The, 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 gr- the, the, the half asleep guy with the, with the station wagon can carry a lot more of these things, but <laughs> yeah. sorry, you're out. <laughs> It cost more though, um, yeah. So yeah, like I had I was like, all right, well, I'll, I'll fucking mow yards or whatever. So that worked, and I got it. But I'm so happy right now because I pre-ordered this earlier. I also pre-ordered something else, but you probably you probably don't care. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I pre-ordered the thirtieth. You, you should probably get in on this. The thirtieth anniversary collection of Street Fighter, and it goes it's Ooh. all of the games starting from Street Fighter One. All the way down to like, what was it? Street Fighter Three, the final attack, or what? I don't remember what it was. I never, I never played that one. Let's see, thirtieth anniversary. 
I only ever played the. F I I mean, I I've played other ones, but the first one was the only one I really like played almost obsessively because that was another one I used to play in the arcades. <laughs> Here it so, is. Jesus Christ! It's so many. So it has, according to Wikipedia, it's also say so. It's for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation Four, Windows, and Xbox One. So that's. It comes with Street Fighter, Street Fighter, t all, five variation, five iterations of Street Fighter Two, including World Warrior Championship Edition, Turbo Hyper Fighting, Super Stur Super Turbo, three incarnations uh, of Street Fighter Alpha, including Alpha Alpha Two, Alpha Three, then Street Fighter Three, including New Generation and Second Impact and Third Strike. So it's got so what's that like? What's like everything. twelve games? Fucking a lot. <laughs> That's insane, dude. How much? How much is that going for? Uh, forty bucks. For wow. the Switch. I don't know what it's going to be for PS, considering that... Because uh, I'm getting physical copies. I am not buying shit from the... The, the virtual... The, the Wii store was a, was a good kind of warning for me to go, like, I'm not going to buy digital copies. Because they're going to shut down the Wii store. Uh, and the Wii U store. Which the Wii U is, what, 2012? It's not that old. Um so wait, wait a minute. They, sh did they, they shut down the store. Did you lose... Do you, you, you still if you have don't the download games, the games and... Oh, if... They're gone. See, that's actually. I mean, I, that is always a concern with any of these because any of these, any of these mm -hmm. systems, they could pull the plug on this stuff at any time. You know, just like you know, just like anything else. You know, if you want, you if if you want stuff, don't keep it on somebody else's server. But right. with the play, with the with the one good thing about the the PlayStation, at least with the PS3, because I like I said, I still haven't upgraded beyond that. But it by default, you have to download the games in order to play them. Yeah, like you can buy them from the store, but you can't just leave them there on the server and play them from there. You have to. So even if they do go down, I'll still have. I mean, well, there'd be a lot a that I've for the weed or for the switch too. So get the oh, okay. Them. Yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, so as long as you download. It. But yeah, but if you download it and then something happens to your memory card and they shut down the store, tough to be you. <laughs> yeah. That or if sucks. you want to get an, if you want to get like a used system and put all your old games back on there. Too bad. That's why, that's why I'm like, oh, I'm just going to buy physical. There's like some games that I'll buy. Like I bought the, um, that's the only one I bought so far. It was the Double Dragon 4, I believe, the new one that looks like the old NES version of the game. It's fun as hell. It was only seven bucks. So if I lose that 10 years from now, I don't care. I'll be all right. Well, that's the only, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the only type of games I buy uh, because I can't. I, I haven't been able to justify spending money on games for the longest time, at least in my own mind, uh, because of the time investment. Especially because most of the games I do like to play, like the like stuff like Final Fantasy, the other series I got into in the past, like most recently, I guess, which is still a while ago, but uh, was the Assassin's Creed series, and I, you know I played I pretty played pretty much I think I played pretty much all of those. Um, except the first one, I still managed to never play that. Um, but I, I purposely like I don't go, I don't go to the store or I don't look for physical games because on I, if I see the newer ones, I know I'll get excited, I get excited about some of them, want to spend money. But I only pick up games off oh. the play, PlayStation Network that, what you call it, usually are ten dollars or under because I can't justify playing anything else. Like that's why I ended up with Final Fantasy Nine because I was like, oh, it's only ten bucks, and I'm like, oh, I actually have seven dollars on my PlayStation credit that I did, didn't even know was still there. So technically, this only cost me three bucks right now. All right, I can afford to, <laughs> I can afford to spend this on a game that is probably going to suck the suck my time for like a good two weeks straight, um, and then I'll be completely done with it. But you know. I could justify that. <laughs> so here's something interesting. If you pre-order it right now for Xbox, uh, the the thirtieth anniversary, um, if you pre-order it now with with Xbox One, PlayStation Four, or Steam, you'll receive a free digital copy of Ultra Street Fighter Four. So uh, another Street Fighter. <laughs> see now, a sweet deal. See, like again, talking about what I what I could justify spending <laughs> spending forty bucks. For what now is apparently like 13 games or something <laughs> is to me, I would normally be able to justify, but I would actually have to buy a PS4 on top of that. Oh, yeah, not yeah, currently yeah. justify. Because like I said, man, I would love to. And some of the games I can't even remember now, I think. But I know I think they actually I think I, I think they announced actually that they were moving the Assassin's Creed franchise to that, too, which pissed me off because I was like, you fucking bastards. I've played every goddamn game and now you're going to move it. <laughs> I'm like, I can't afford a, a new system. There's no way I could justify a new system, even if the sale of my house ever actually happens, um, which at this point it's, it's looking more and more like that. I have no idea if it's going to um, mm -hmm. But even if it does. I still can't justify that. Um, 
because uh, you know I have kids and stuff, so I guess I probably should pay for something for them first before I go buying myself a new game system. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a little bit more important. That's why I was yeah. like, yeah, I don't want kids. I just want to, I just want vidges. I'll just play my vidges. <laughs> It'd be better. Vidges will yeah. never leave me. Vidges will never get mad. Vidges will never get knocked up. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some kid, some people like your kids, so whatever. Yeah. I just say fucking pervert. No. <laughs> 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 but apparently, I guess that's libertarian as to get into kids. Uh, anyways. Um, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Hot take. <laughs> but they consented. Um so yeah, yeah, it's uh, none of my business. Yeah, it's none of my business. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so yeah, like, yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not super into vidges, but um, like I said, I was really into Team Fortress lately, and then I still go back every once in a while and still try to work a little bit more on my 100 percent completion for Zelda. I got Super Mario Odyssey, and that's fun, but I just haven't found time to really sit down out of my studio and, and go sit down in front of the TV and play it properly. Cause it's not one of those games you can just play it on the console thing. Cause there's certain things you have to do and like, you have to like move the, the joy cons around. So setting it up on my stand here and playing, it's just not, I might as well just go plug it into my thing. I could plug it into my monitor, but too much work <laughs> <laughs> dragging all that stuff in here. And, yeah, I was like, I'll just go play it on my TV. Eh, I don't want to go in there. Fuck it. I just won't. But yeah, the <laughs> Super Mario game's fun. The 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 Zelda game's far better, even though the the Mario game is insanely fun. And um, that's about it. Like I I'm not into one of those people that play like CS:GO 24 hours and trying to collect all the skins and trading them and you know getting ripped off in a lottery. Or I'm not into like Battlefield or Call of Duty or whatever bullshit game is out right now. <laughs> you know that's that's for mass appeal not into that i just want to play team fortress and, and my <laughs> and my nintendos yeah. and of course my uh i had a little retro pie with that i play games on you know some classic games and and my uh my intellivision thing i don't it's not, it's not <laughs> i don't know what it is I forget what I what what the dude called it, but it's it's like a hack. Like they just gutted out a one of those flashbacks and put a retro pie in there and made the controllers work for it. So I was like, all right, that's worth a hundred bucks. So I can play all my old in television games. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I was tempted when you were talking about all that stuff. Last, you know, it was sometime last year when you got all that. I was like really tempted to get into, and then I I went ahead and got a. I had never even I had never even attempted to like even download an emulator on my phone. And uh, and then I did, and I was like, I saw all the games I could play, and I was like, man, I'm missing out on all this great stuff. And then I tried doing it on my phone, and I figured out very quickly that um, that tech, you know, that tech guy who does that podcast thingy, um, he's right. Um, you know, you need a controller to play most of those games. It sucks. Um, and I was really occasionally when you were he's right. Yeah, occasionally. Um, but <laughs> when you were talking about, <laughs> he's usually wrong. You were... <laughs> so, so so very very wrong especially um, about mov movie movies and music games <laughs> um but you uh, uh I, I was very tempted when you were talking about getting all that stuff and then i was just like ah, i'm gonna waste so much more time and <laughs> i probably shouldn't and for once in my life i actually did the did i guess the smart thing or the adult thing and didn't do it yeah. well they have a new raspberry pi out that's a little bit faster you know 40 bucks and you can put virtually whatever game you want for virtually any system on there you know up to i think they stop at like place i think they stop at the i think the dreamcast is on that thing i never really tried to i tried to get it to work once and i just gave up because it really is too much work but allegedly you can play um ps1 games on there so if you want to get your final fantasy games for free there you go yeah that well like work. i said well, yeah, now I think I've paid for all the ones that were on the PS1 anyway. So. 
because because se- seven was the first one i mean that was that was the landmark game when it came out and then uh you know i i bought i bought it at you know 50 bucks or whatever it was at the time and then i actually paid for it a second time through the through the playstation store years later so i could play it again so right. um so have you watched the have you been watching marvel movies at all um, I'm behind because I don't do the I don't do the movie theater thing, and okay. uh, I, uh, I I I prefer to wait for uh, for good quality copies to be come available at the pu- public library. Of course, you still get to get and, that get that your your library card renewed. Yeah, because I got a I got a I got a what should I call it. I, I got a copy from the library of Black Panther, but it wasn't a very good copy, so I decided I haven't even watched it yet. So that's like I haven't. Even, what's that? I think is that, it? I think I saw an advertisement for it somewhere. If it is, then I then I could probably look again, but uh, and check the library to see if they have an updated version. Um, but when I first got it, it wasn't the greatest version, and uh, so I still haven't watched that yet. The last thing I watched was Ragnarok. If this auto plays, I'm going to be mad. It is. Damn you. Never coming to this side again, Den of Geek. I said stop. God damn it. There's nothing worse than auto playing videos and music when you go to a website. I will I really your side. fucking hate that. I, I, I feel like I every time every time that happens, I feel like somebody's fucked with my browser and I've I've stepped into the MySpace world again. Yeah. My May it's, fifteen. Which, you know, it's pos- uh, it's possible you could probably find something, you know. I don't want to hop on a um a v- oh, I could now that I have another computer doing this. Hmm. I mean, my of course you go through the public library on my using my card, <clears throat> my library card. Uh, it, but um, so I ended up watching like all of the the Marvel movies in quote unquote order, not the order that they were released, but the order. That oh, the, they, yeah, no, no, yeah, I've the, the the sequence that they put out that this is the order you should watch them. Yeah, and that type of thing. Yeah, I've seen I've seen that thing. Yeah, and, I've I've looked at that. I I haven't tried doing it yet, but I I know what you're talking about. Yeah, um, and so I, I ended up going through all of them, and I've kind of there's there's a couple of them that I picked out to be like my favorite ones. Uh, the the my favorite one so far. Before we get into the new one, uh, was 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 Winter Soldier. It's not anymore. Um, then probably um, what I have under that Thor Ragnarok. Um, Doctor Strange is definitely up up uh, up on that list somewhere. I should I should probably order them. <laughs> I should probably order them while this while the video version of this is rendering and put it in the show notes. So that's what I'll do. <laughs> but definitely number one now is Infinity War. That's by far my favorite. And it took me a while to really kind of like think about it and mull it over. And I want to see it again just to clarify. Oh, Black Panther is up there. I like Black Panther, but I think the problem that I have with Black Panther is that they just half-ass the visual effects. I mean, it was some of it was like, like it looked like a like a PlayStation game. Some of it, or no, it reminded me of like the old Spider-Man movies, the older ones with Tobey Maguire. Oh, the Tobey Maguire ones. Yeah. yeah. It and it was like. This is 2018. Why are we using effects that look like it came out of 10 years ago? Like, what are we doing? Um, but other than that, it, it looked great. Or it, it, the movie was great. It didn't look great in some parts. So there's that. Other than that, it was a fucking awesome movie. It's, all, it's all up, up on my list, even though the political bullshit around it was, was absolutely garbage. Just, just watch fucking movies. Why does everything have to be a political <laughs> thing now? <laughs> Well, that's just white that's, people aren't allowed to watch it. Well, white people must watch this to stop being racist. Like, just shut up. Let me watch the movie and enjoy it. <laughs> and there was nothing political about it. It was just like, oh, it's a story about a fictitious ci- uh, uh, city in in uh, in Africa where technology is great because they found like this flower and vibranium. That's it. It's not supposed to be real. It's not supposed to be a political message or anything. Jesus Christ. Although Black Panther turned out to be somewhat later. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not a comic guy, so <laughs> I read comics <laughs> vicariously. Uh, <laughs> just have other people tell me about them. That's yeah, how I enjoy I my comics. Um, I haven't unle- read comics in years. So, yeah. Yeah. Unless it's Alan Moore. I'll read Alan Moore. Anything that Alan Moore writes, I'll read it. That guy's great. Um, you know, Watchmen, V for Vendetta. Even though the V for Vendetta movie, I can't, I can't watch it now. 
I used to love yes, it. Yes, we've we, we, we've yeah. discussed that. The 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 the, the book the book the book changes you. If if, the, if reading the book after the fact doesn't change your mind about the movie, then there's something there's something horribly defective with yeah. you as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> they try to make that movie about like 9/11 truth and neocons. It's like fuck you. <laughs> and it was kind of interesting at the time, but then when you read the book, you're like, oh no, that the message was much more powerful in the book. And yeah. the story was much more compelling in the book. The whole like Saint Ives thing storyline that didn't exist in the uh, in the book, you know the, the the false flag thing that didn't exist in the book. Yep. yep, it was all made up for the movie, and it was fucking pointless. Anyways, um, <laughs> so yeah, the Infinity War. It's fucking. I'm not going to spoil it for you or whatever. I already did a review with spoilers in it on my Patreon, oh. but it is very dark. Very, very dark and bleak. Very dark. Hmm. <laughs> and like they they outdid DC in, in in the dark department for sure. And they did it right. And they did it with forty four hundred people. And they couldn't even do it with what five or six people for the Justice League. It's fucking pathetic how bad DC is. <laughs> I tried watching Justice League. I got to the part where Stephen Wolf came out, and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm just done. I don't want to watch any more DC movies until they fucking sort their shit out. <laughs> I'm just done. I, I I haven't watched the like my kids. My my kids love these love all these superhero movies. Uh, they're totally into them, and they watched Justice League with Jen uh, a couple of weeks ago because I managed to get a, you know, I have I have a, I got a great copy from the public library for that yeah. one. Um, and uh, you know, they watched it. I sat through parts of it and i was kind of like eh but i also hadn't seen uh any of the other ones leading up to that like they had also like i i had also watched like i'd watch parts of wonder woman with them and uh but i hadn't watched superman or the batman superman or the batman ones with uh what's his face affleck yeah. so i haven't watched any of this stuff um i've never been a fan of most of the dc movies overall not even the um, older ones or we're just talking well, no, about the I mean, cinematic well, like, universe okay, well, yeah, like that, like that type of stuff. Because okay. I mean, you, like the the original, like well, the Keaton's Batman, I loved. Obviously, I mean that was that. That's when I mean when when did that come out? I mean how I mean how old was I? I obviously, I mean I was I was in love with that movie when it first came out. Um, and I even I even liked the Christian Bale version, um, the Dark Knight and all those ones. Yep. I still um, think the third one is the best, and uh, but it's not because I think it's a better movie cinematically or story wise. It's not. Uh, but all the great memes come out of the uh, come out of the third one for sure. All the Bane memes and stuff, Bane posting, that all makes it worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Bane posting alone made the third one the best. Uh, but if I wasn't <laughs> judging it on terms of like cultural influence, uh, then then yeah, then then uh, the Dark Knight is the best. The one with the Joker. But yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> No, I I agree. I would agree with you. <laughs> but yeah, I just I never because I, I was also never a DC like, I, I uh I always I always thought Batman was cool like as a kid and stuff. But I never got into the DC world. I was always a Marvel. I was always a Marvel guy, um, growing up. Uh, and then uh, and also I had this irrational hatred of Superman. <laughs> I never and I liked don't, Superman either. So. I, I don't, but I don't, I can't really explain it other than something about watching Christopher Reeve and the first one irked me when I was a kid. Oh, and boy. So, just so, something, so like I never, wa like I never, I think I made it through the first one. I've never watched the other th three to completion. Um, and I just hated Superman after that. I was I was hating on Christopher Reeves, Reeves long before he became a meme. Uh, the only, <laughs> the only, the only one of those movies. The only movies, those Superman movies, I would include Supergirl in that too. The only ones that are even worth watching are the first two. Specifically the first one. The first one was great. The second one was it's okay. It's good. But the first one was great. If you didn't like it, then forget about watching two. <laughs> You're not going to like it. But I, I, I like it. But I, I like it. It, it is kind of campy looking back on it now. But yeah, I would way, I, yeah. If I went back and watched it now, I might actually enjoy it. That was one of those things that I got turned off to at a very young age and just never revisited. And like I said, I built this be from that this irrational just disdain for Superman <laughs> overall, like beyond Christopher Reeves' portrayal of him. Just the disdain for Superman grew within me.
<laughs> to the fact that I, now we find it funny because, like I said, my kids are really into this. And lately, my one daughter has become obsessed with Superman. So much so that she just needed to, she's the one with, uh, with the CPs and she needs, uh, she, they have, uh, braces for her that she wears to help her to try to help straighten out her walk a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, she just needed to get new ones. Cause she's, you know, these kids grow like freaking weeds, man. It's, it's insane. Like when we tell people the even, I mean, this has been happening for years now, but like to tell anybody at now almost seven years old that my kids were, you know, born two months premature and like barely three pounds a piece and like all this stuff, people would think we're lying. Because they're, they've been huge for their age ever since. <laughs> um, but they, they're constantly growing. And, and my one daughter, the, 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 the one with the, the, with the CP, actually outweighs her sister, I think, by something by like 20 pounds almost. And is like an inch and a half taller than her, too. But they're both big for their age. But anyway, she needed to get, you know, she needed to get new braces because her feet keep growing. And she, when they, you know, they, they have this whole book of stickers that you can put in, that they'll put on special stickers that won't get, you know, won't get worn off or whatever right away. Mm -hmm. um, to make, you know, for the kids. So they, you know, so make it a little more comfortable for them, you know, instead of just, oh, you got to wear these, you know, silly braces on your feet. Oh, you can, you know, you can decorate them however you want. Of all the things in this book. <laughs> She specifically picks Superman and has like Superman stickers. Oh, like that's all she wanted because she's like currently, as she put it, in love with Superman. Um, my little almost seven year old daughter. Yeah, I think Superman is bullshit. Like you just he just can do everything. He he never loses except once to Doomsday. But I think that was more of a marketing thing. He just wins everything. He can do anything. And what does he do? He just you know rescues his girlfriend. <laughs> well man priorities priorities <laughs> i mean you got i mean you got to imagine that lois lane had some bang and snatch i mean if he was just running like <laughs> i mean what other well lois lane what? except for the new movies lois lane is actually an interesting character she really is she's really an important character to those to the to, to everything like i guess the comic books i don't know but like the the tv show and and the uh, uh the movies and but now she's just now she's just um oh Hi, let's candy. just oh the, the new movies all they have her do is just randomly appear in different places so that exposition can be explained to her about what's going on that's all she's there for that's all she's there for in the movie Oh, and for him to rescue while everybody else in the whole entire city perishes <laughs> in a very tragic <laughs> death. Um, but she she's okay. Uh, it's yeah. just it's just so she's just so worthless in this movie. She's she's kind of relegated to like like gross out humor movies of the two thousands roles. Just like oh, just a, a worthless love interest. That's it. That's all she's there for, and it's so terrible. <laughs> so terrible well she's good at that role so you know they might as well keep her in it <laughs> she other i mean she's a great actress and they just have her in bullshit <laughs> because I, I i first started really noticing her when i saw her in the master which is a fucking awesome movie it's like one of my favorite movies really need to get that on blu-ray um there, there's there's another movie you could watch you you what you, you rec i recommended parkland you probably would like oh. this uh, yeah, I'll, well, I'll, I'll check it out because you know, again, you're you're uh, you're on the positive side with your recommendations, yeah. you know, um, lately. So, Park. Uh, speaking of Parkland, I don't think I I don't think I talked to you about it ever since we did that episode, and then I I, I told you I'd watched it. Not only did I watch it, um, and then we talked about it the next night after we recorded. I told Jen about it and she wanted to watch it. I sat and watched it again. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how like two days, two nights later, I had watched it a second time already. And I sat there like normally at any movie, no matter how good I thought it was. If I watched it that soon after, I would probably get up and go to the bathroom and not worrying about pausing or, you know, something like mm -hmm. that. Or like go get a drink of water. Like I actually sat there the entire time and watched the entire movie all over again. Yeah, it's know, riveting. It, it, yeah, it's even even the second time. Although I will say that even on the second time through, I couldn't find the level of disdain you had for Billy Bob's um, scene. <laughs> <laughs> that was just that one scene. It didn't ruin the movie, but it was. It could have. I, I still, I still, I was like, I was like, all right, I can kind of see that's over the top, but yeah, Jim's just crazy about this. I still did. I still didn't think. It, I still didn't think it was that bad. Uh, the rest of the movie more than made up for it. So, uh, in any, if it was in, in any other movie, I would have been like, ah, killed it. <laughs> <laughs> killed it for me but yeah the master it's a it's a paul thomas anderson uh film and it's it's not like some it's not like bookie nights this is more kind of like 
it's almost art house. Actually, I, I will say it's, it is it is an art house movie. Like and I think it was shot on like seventy millimeter or something like that, but it's got um, oh fuck, what's his name? Philip, the guy that just died, Philip Seymour Hoffman, and um, just just died. Wasn't that like four years ago at this point? It's it's fresh, man. Like after it, it was, <laughs> it, it really hurts, man, because this movie was so good, <laughs> and it was like one of his. I think it was his last film, wasn't it? Yeah, two thousand. I have no idea. Walking Phoenix is in it too. But it's just basically those two kind of like acting with each other. And the whole kind of dynamic is like Walking Phoenix is a World War II vet with PTSD. But like this was in the 50s. So they didn't really have a term for it yet. They were just like, ah, just shell shocked. You'll get over it. Kind of attitude towards it. And then um, Philip Seymour Hoffman, who is obviously supposed to be L. Ron Hubbard. And he joins his fucking like cult. (laughs) <laughs> try to better himself and it's kind of interesting the kind of dynamic that they have too and it, it gets dark lots of nudity uh, lots of weird alcohol drunken mishaps i question mark around alcohol uh <laughs> but yeah it's really good really really good all right yeah. I'll, uh, I'll check that one out because uh I, I i've missed i've I, like i said i i don't do the movie i don't do the movie theater thing and i don't uh you know, I, I I go to the library for specific movies, um, <laughs> but I miss so many of the other ones because I don't pay attention to like what's going on in in the in the world of uh, Hollywood as far as movies go. So I and I you know I don't pay attention to the any any of the award shows or anything. So like I I never have any idea unless it's thrown in my face constantly. <laughs> I, I I miss so many movies because I don't even know they exist. Well, let me throw uh, this one at you again. You you have to watch the, the the master, but you it's worth going to theaters to see uh, Infinity War. It is. Uh, it's I very know. much worth I, it to go see Infinity War. By far, see, this is. And see, it's the problem. The problem is right. I mean, aside from my my current money, money woes, <laughs> um, okay. going to a theater um, at this juncture without my kids would probably be difficult and even more so for this movie like in order for me to justify seeing this movie without them um would be really difficult considering how invested they are in the marvel world these two little ones um but i really i'm not sure if they're ready like they still we still haven't taken them to a to a movie yet because you know they're still they're still young. I mean, I sat through a movie at a younger age than them. I mean, I watched E.T. and I think Empire, uh, both in the theaters back in '81 uh, when I was four, five years old, or whenever the E.T. was '83 maybe. Um, so I was a little older. Um, whenever they came out, you know, it's like I was seeing movies at that age. But like my my kids are so used to watching stuff when that when you know and being able to, like. I didn't have tablets at that age. Like they have that where they've been able to watch movies in a car <laughs> and be able to stop it and do whatever they want and stuff. So their attention to be able to sit through an entire movie in a theater, I think may be difficult. Um, plus I like I've seen, I, I've tried to avoid most spoilers, but I've read, you know, I've been following what the storyline is supposed uh, to be. Yeah, um, don't, don't, and I, don't spoil it, but it's probably like, depending on how old your kids is, it's probably not a good idea to go take him to this one. Let well, just say see, that. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think I know <laughs> what's going to happen, at least in some regard. Although my one daughter, I think would be okay with that because she's the one who actually insisted on watching Logan. We watched Logan together and I had never seen it before. Like my first viewing of it was with my then six year old. Oh. Um, but I knew what was going to happen and I okay. prepped her for it and she, <laughs> and, and, and to top it all off, well, uh, for the, I mean, she's now she's super into black widow. Um, but, uh, but Wolverine is by far her favorite character. Although I think that's partially because she knows he's always been my favorite, you know, he, Wolverine's always been my favorite. Um, but she like loves the, even the crappy Wolverine movies. <laughs> she she loves those, but she wanted to watch Logan. And I was like, listen, you like, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, you know, but I know <laughs> I, I do know that your boy and Professor X both both bite it in this movie. I'm like, now we've watched Professor X bite it in another movie, <laughs> but he came back. <laughs> 
Yeah. I'm like, you know, so this is like, you know, but and she wanted to watch it and she was cool with it. And she had there's been you know, she hasn't had any issues from it since, but like she seems to understand. So like I think she would be cool with it. My other daughter, I don't know so much. <laughs> yeah. Um, especially if it's any of her heroes. Um, you know, particularly she I don't think she's uh you know, and seeing that in a theater, I think, was is a recipe for a meltdown. Mm-hmm. So I don't yeah, know if I'm going to get the opportunity to do that, unfortunately. Yeah, there's, there's been a lot of talk saying, like, this is this is probably going to cause a lot of little kids to, to like, break down. And <laughs> parents are not going like, to just skip this one, at least until, like, until next year when the next one comes out. And we, you know, we, we get some more information. But it's 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 dark let's put it that way <laughs> it's very very dark this movie is very very dark and there's look and i didn't know i had I, like i said like i read vi- comics vicariously and i don't know anything about captain marvel but apparently this is what people next to me were sitting at the end at the end of the very movie you know how like marvel they have like the little end credit scene after they yeah, yeah. over um there's a scene where nick fury's beeper has the the Captain Marvel logo on it, and I was like, I don't know what that means. But one of the, I didn't say it out loud, but someone clearly offered next to me the information that I needed to know. It's like, oh, Captain Marvel, this could change everything. So we'll see what's going on with Captain Marvel. I think that's what's probably going to let us know what's happening with this movie. Because I, yeah, I, I can't I, imagine I, this. This is this is permanent. Yeah, I, I already, I already, I already read a little bit about that, and I don't know. For, at least from what I know, I mean, the whole, the, I, I don't, I don't read the comics anymore either. But I do, I, I do know the storyline at least. The whole cap, the whole Captain Marvel thing takes place in the '90s. So the fact that they're bringing, the fact that they're her bringing her back means they're are they're already they're automatically jumping back like twenty or thirty years. <laughs> um, so everybody will still be alive, <laughs> clearly. Yeah. Um, and I think if, from what I've read, if people did die, we'll just say that if people did die, yes. Yeah. Um, but uh, well, I mean, there's already, but there's already been, you know, even like what's his face? Uh, who, was it the first one he died? The first Avengers he died in Colston, Agent Colston. Um, the uh, the 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 what should we call it? Was that his name? Oh, well, that's Phil. not the Avenger movie. That's uh, Cap- Captain America, the Winter Soldier, right? Is you're talking about? No, no, oh. he die. He he dies. He dies in the Avengers one. Yeah, because when they have Loki in the uh, in the airship. Yeah. Well, Loki died yeah. in one of them. I think it was the second one because I, I tried to blank that one out. That one was just fucking god awful. That wasn't even a movie. <laughs> what all? What what's the second one? Uh, the second Thor. Oh yeah, Dark, Dark I watched World. that. Oh, it was so bad. I had dredged that, that one. I had to take a break. Yeah, both both Thor movies were kind of one and done's for me. Where I was kind of like, I watched like the first one was all right. The second one it was definitely like I, I same thing. I dragged through it, but I haven't gone. <laughs> I I haven't revisited those. I've watched most of the other Marvel movies at least, you know, two times. Not those ones, or not the maybe third Iron Man. Third Maybe Iron Man was like a- third. Third Iron Man was good. The second one was pretty bad. It wasn't. It wasn't terrible. It was just like when this. Is oh, it was the second. It was the second. It was the second one. Yeah, the, sec- yeah, the, second the one, one with what's bad. what's his face? Mickey Rooney, right? Is that his name? <laughs> Mickey Rooney. <laughs> Not Mickey Rooney. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I? No, I don't. No. <laughs> oh, are you talking about the the Mandarin? No, no. The, the second one okay, was, that was the third uh, one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the second one was what's his face? Who played the what the hell's I can't think of the character's name now. The, with the, the with the electricity. He was in the wrestler. What the fuck is his name? <laughs> it's not Mickey Rooney. Why can't I think of his fucking name right now? Mickey Rourke? Rourke, thank you. Rourke, thank you. I got to remember I knew it what the hell Mickey Iron Rooney. Man 2 was about cuz I remember that wasn't that was another one that wasn't that good. Yeah, Iron Man Two is the one where he ends up. Was he is he in the race car in France or wherever? And uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The that whole, one was pretty uh, bad. The the Russian dude who was taken after for his father, who used to be part, who was uh, partners with uh, Howard Stark back in the day. Okay. That whole storyline. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was a very it was a bad it was a bad bad. <laughs> and when he got drunk in his Iron Man suit, that was just like you're just reaching for content right now. Come on, Marvel. <laughs> But uh, Ragnarok was 
by far the best uh, Thor movie, uh, unquestionably. It's, but that's it's kind of a low bar anyway. And it's kind of interesting yeah. that they, 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 they brought up what happened to Natalie Portman's character as like, oh, yeah, I just broke up with her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everything's explained well, now. You know, tie, yeah. <laughs> tie, 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 tie that up nice and neat. You know. yep. uh, yeah, we're done with that. Hey, we got, we got closure. You know, that's, I think that was well, more kind of important. like – I think that was more kind of like the filmmaker. T, was it Titi Wakudu or whatever his name is? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the hell is that guy's name is. Um, he played Korg in that movie, which, and he was like by far my favorite character. Uh, I will spoil this. He dies. Um, Korg dies. Uh, they don't show him dying, but it's assumed that he's dead. Because um, it's like in the first like 10 minutes or 10 seconds of the movie. So that's not whatever. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, was it going? Oh yeah, the the third the third Ragnarok was a completely different thing, and I think what they were doing in that was just saying like, "Oh, I broke up with her." I think that was more like code for "We're done with that kind of style of Thor movie. We're actually going to do good shit in it with this with this character now." Because <laughs> the other ones were so bad, um, yeah. So I enjoyed it. My Marvel fatigue is over for me because they're actually starting to do something interesting with the with the series now with. Uh, with Infinity War and, and Black Panther, they're definitely going down a different road. And I'm well, very they have happy to. With it. Yeah, they they, they kind of have to. They're, yeah. they're I mean, what's his face? Da- uh, Downey's out after the next after the second Infinity War. Infinity War, right? That's his last one. I think he's under contract for. And they, um, I mean, there's talk. There's talk about. Isn't there talk about the X Men franchise finally being able to be being brought back in because of all the ha- hands everything switched through at this point? Oh yeah, because Fox is owned by Disney now. Yeah, so now they could find they could finally bring that in, and they and they've lost uh, what's his face um, Jackman's gone too for for Wolverine. Yeah. Um. So they have you know what they have to move in a new direction because they're losing the you know the people who've carried the fran- both of those franchises forever. Mm-hmm. You know both of them. It's insane, especially when you think about what's his name Jackman. I mean, he carried that franchise like it was. I, I didn't even realize it until I went back and looked. Like, holy shit, the first X Men came out this fucking long ago. Yeah. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. He's been doing this like, what like 15 fucking 18 years, some crazy shit like that. The span of them. Um. Is something something like that between all of them, and he's like the only he's he's the only redeeming like parts of a lot of those movies. Like some of them are really bad. The first couple X Men were good. And they started. The first one was off. good. Second one was eh. Third one was definitely um the 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 the, the reboot like the the what you call it the prequel type ones. Um, they weren't that bad. Yeah, some of them are um, okay. Some of them are like the apocalypse one. I was like, hmm. yeah, this is all just um, punchy. But yeah, but it was yeah, it was mostly Hugh Jackman, and of course, I mean any you know Patrick Stewart, of course. I mean because you can't, you couldn't have cast a more perfect um, person <laughs> yeah, for the perfect. for the role of Professor X in that you know in that storyline than Patrick Stewart, of course. So yeah. like those were those were, those were always the two best parts of the entire thing. Well, actually, I should say that what's his call it? Um, Ian McClellan was actually awesome as uh, Magneto too. I thought um, I Halle never Barry, would have thought of him. Halle or- Berry was a perfect choice for Storm. Perfect. Yeah, uh, Even though she's I guess not the best actress. In well, the no, because she's not, she's she's you know she's pretty. I, I always thought she's she was okay. pre- she was she was okay. Yeah, she was. I thought we thought she was <laughs> she was good. But uh, when I remember when that when the first one came out, I didn't see her because I didn't think of the whole like I didn't think she had enough of an edge to do the storm thing. Because storm, you know, if you know anything about the storm character, she's you know she's not exactly sweet and nice. No, <laughs> you know she uh, because she came. She was one of the original. Uh, well, she was she was one of the four horsemen, I think. Um, during the whole apocalypse thing, yeah, that's where she came from because you you see that in the storyline. Um, if you watch the uh, the prequel ones, um, I think it is the apocalypse one, right? Yeah, that's the one we're talking. Yeah. You, you mentioned um, that's where that's where she come that's where she comes out of. So yeah, the know, Wolverine she, movie was terrible, 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 terrible. Logan was great. Logan um, was Logan by far is the best X Men movie. Um, Deadpool. Deadpool is fucking amazing. Deadpool, I don't know if it if he qualifies as an X Men movie. It's in the same universe, but it has X Men. It has it's the o- it's the only other it's it's the only other outside one that has X Men characters in yeah. it. Yeah, because he kind of he, got... he does exist in that in that world. Yeah, well, he exists. Deadpool Deadpool exists in all worlds. That's yeah. kind because of... <laughs> he was forced to be a mutant. So, um, well, not forced. 
he volunteered. <laughs> Actually, I've been. Did the second one come sort out yet, course. or that's coming out soon? Yeah, it's coming. I think it's coming out this year. Coming out in a couple yeah, months. I'm, and then yeah. that I'm one dying, looks I'm, like it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, di- I'm dying for. I'm dying to see that one too because that's another one. Like you could not. I don't think you could have cast a, a better Deadpool than fucking Ryan Reynolds. Um, but I had. Z- I was expecting this movie to be a disaster. Well, well, because they waste. Well, see, I I knew because they waste. They they totally blew it with him in the Wolverine movies, when they when they tried to have, like yeah. they, you you saw you you saw the first was it the first yeah the very first one yeah the first or or, or origins. The, the origins one yeah. you saw flashes of what he could do, what he could do like the verbal shit yeah that he could pull like how he the way he could play that character like you saw flashes of that and i I've, I've always been so his mouth shut <laughs> yeah but i've always been a ryan reynolds fan um just like, I, I always thought he was i always thought he was fun you know he's <laughs> he played because he played the roles he plays is you know he plays he, he plays the roles that he's, he's playing he, he, he does them well man whatever they're stupid they're goofy you know come on van wilder's fucking hysterical um but anyway i, I always knew, thought that I, he was like I always thought he was like the dime store Dane Cook, and Dane Cook is already a dime store something else. So da- Dane Cook is a dime store Dane Cook. Yeah, All right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I can't stand that dude. I hate Dane Cook. I hate Dane Cook as well. And I know I get what you're saying because I used to think that, but then like there was a couple of those like stupid cheesy movies of his that I kind of like. I ended up watching when I was high, and I was like, oh, this is really like it got me giggling, Green and Lantern? I was like, oh, fuck. no, no, no. no. No, uh, that was horrible, yeah. and I didn't even make it all. The, I didn't even make it all the way through that. But like I said, I knew what. Like I saw the flashes of what he could do, and I also knew how much he wanted to do it because I had read all the shit about him saying like he really wanted to do this character, and he was up. He was he was kind of bummed that they kind of just blew up, blew the character off the way he did. So that when he got when they finally greenlit the opportunity for him to bring it back, he was like, "I am taking the the balls to the fucking wall." Yeah, and uh, that I was like, he, you know, and he obviously had to make up for Green Lantern. <laughs> yes, and he even made so, fun of it in the movie a few times. He was it, like, "As long as it's not green and animated." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> talking about the suit. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. So that that one that actually by, still might be my favorite. I don't know of yeah. all of them of all the Marvel movies. Deadpool. But they had to cast favorite. him. They did. They didn't have a choice in casting him. Uh, casting Deadpool because, like, I guess in the comic, a few times they even ask him, like, "What do you look like under there?" Or "What did you used to look like?" And he would say, "Like, I, I." He's like, "I look like Dane, um, Ryan Reynolds." Like he used, to, he used to say that in the comics, so they had like no other option but to use. Them. So it was like okay, but yeah, like for me, it was like I never liked anything, never really liked it. Like not, there's some things that he was okay in, I guess. Like Van Wilder was was good, but there's been a lot of other movies that he was been terrible in, including the Green Lantern. So I was like, that's strike one for me. Strike two is like it's an X Men movie, and third, the trailers for it when it came out, the the Green Band trailers were just like. Oh, these are easy jokes. This is probably not going to be good. And then I was like, I don't know. They, I think they could ruin this. I think they could ruin this. And then I was, then then everybody was like, Oh, fuck! This is great. Everybody <laughs> go see it. And I was like, All right, I'll go see it. And I enjoyed it. I was like, This is probably one of my favorite, co- you know, punch movies. So, but now, now I have to say that my favorite um, punch movie was Everybody Punch. Infinite punches, <laughs> starring literally everybody. <laughs> like everybody was in that movie, but yeah, it's. I would say go go watch it by yourself. Go and watch it by yourself if you can. If there's like a five dollar Tuesday, which by the way it is Tuesday, um, if they got a five dollar Tuesday type thing at Cinemark, I know they have, or like you know whatever Monday, depending on what theater, go and watch it. It's an event. It's not so much a movie as it is an event. Because, you know, how, how could you have a three-act structure <laughs> with <laughs> starring 800 people? It's not possible. <laughs> but they did it. Yeah. They pulled it off. They did what Justice uh. League tried to do with six people. They, would, they did it with 40. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go wow. ahead and clap. Good job, Marvel. <laughs> Good job, Russo Brothers. You did it. You did it. <laughs> you well, did the thing. I, I definitely want to see it. I don't know if I hope. Hopefully, I'll get I'll, I'll get a chance to see it in the theaters. Yeah. I don't know, but like you know, I I I, under, I know I I know what you mean, and I'm sure 
I'm sure I've missed out on 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 quite a bit for a, a number of the movies I've seen over the years that I just never actually made it there, um, and uh, and ended up seeing them on my TV. Uh, but you know, I'm just I'm so the movie lazy was and... shot in IMAX. The entire movie was shot in IMAX. I don't think that's ever happened. That's I know insane. Batman. They shot some of it in IMAX. Some of those movies and in, in, in partially IMAX. So it was like a few scenes here and there where they were shot in IMAX. The rest they had to use regular cameras. But this was this movie was entirely shot on IMAX. So mm, it's it's pretty pretty crazy. Yeah. And purple well. nutsack man, he was actually pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> well. <laughs> I'll try to get to it. <laughs> yeah, like I said, unfortunately, I have other pressing matters. <laughs> well, maybe you should, maybe you should, uh, you know, distract yourself from it, which we should probably talk about. Like Jeremy, Jeremy getting out of New York, a Stan update. <laughs> oh, do we even have the time? We've been going for a while on this. We went from video games to movies. Uh, <laughs> There's no time limit. If I can record a three-hour show with MK, I can record an hour and a half show with you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't and know those are the ones I get complaints my, I about. Know, I don't know if this was more about me or MK. I'm kind of confused. Nah. Anyway. <laughs> if, 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 I don't know because it, MK is one of those ones. She's like super divisive. It's not like I just only get uh, hate mail about it. Like I get I get mixed reviews with it. But it's it's oh, like know. extreme polar. Like I, everybody else seems to be like, I like this host. This host is okay. This host is good. This host is great. But it's never no, – no one's ever said like, oh, MK is okay or she's all right. It's always like, fuck MK or, oh, my God, MK is the greatest host on this show ever. <laughs> it's it's one or the other. You got <laughs> It's yeah, like there's you, no you, middle you, ground with MK. It's either yeah, you absolutely yeah. adore her on every level or you absolutely hate. I think I'm the <laughs> only person that's like sort of like – in the middle, it's like there's times where I really like MK and I really hate it. <laughs> I'm just like, oh no, I, 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 th- I think I think I landed that. So. Yeah, I think I landed that camp too. I've I've talked about this before. How okay. I used I could I couldn't how I couldn't stand her when she, when I was a Fiends fan, um, and then I did a show with her and my entire opinion never changed because yeah. we had the best time just hanging out in the breaks and stuff and just joking around about stuff. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I currently have a similar opinion to you where, you know, most of the, most of the time, you know, I she's I'm, I'm fine with her. Um, but there are times that she still drives me up a wall, you know, like maybe the most recent tech podcast I listened to um, that she possibly was on. Um, yeah, I it's was the just only like, time that show's good is when MK is on. I'm just saying well, that no, I wasn't saying the show and, or, was bad but or some of the things she said. I yeah. was just like, oh, man, or Stephanie. But other she than always, that, she, he, she always just, she always makes things better. Yeah. Other than that, he's just a crazy <laughs> sovereign citizen. <laughs> it's not even his name. But go ahead. Speaking of sovereign citizens, yeah, that, that remind, see that reminds me. Now we're going full circle to Marvel movies again. I, I totally I I forgot that the term sovereign citizen was used in the Gardens Guardians of the Galaxy. The Gardens of the Galaxy. The guard, <laughs> Guardians. I said Guardians, didn't I? You've been watching too much Red Letter Media. I tried to yeah. say, I tried to say guardians. <laughs> I think the RD and just got to get hung up there. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah. So, oh, so what we're talking about? Update my my horrible situation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, let's see. As of uh, oh, I'm getting a phone call. This who knows if this is important or not. We'll see. Um, but uh, we'll yeah. see you tomorrow because we're going to record for 24 hours. No, go ahead. <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> I, I finally spoke to my real estate attorney this morning, uh, and uh, there still isn't that much progress. Uh, the update is I still have no idea what's going on. I My house is still under contract, but because of the bullshit with the town of Hempstead here, the sale still has not been completed. And I my like my attorney was under a completely different impression before I spoke to him this morning. And now I have set him on a different task and a completely different path because he was he had spoken to the supervisor of the build of the building department, which has supposedly been the hold up to this process. And he the supervisor told my my attorney one story. And then the contractor who's supposed to be handing the permits for me got a completely different story from the same office. <laughs> And when I informed my attorney of that this morning, he was like, oh, 
all right, I got to make some more phone calls because <laughs> like the town had basically they held up the process by first uh, all these all, all the violations I had placed on me when all that crap happened with me um, a year ago now because uh, actually today today's May first right today's the, today's the anniversary of my arrest you mm. <laughs> um, the uh, what shall I call it. Uh, there was a bunch of uh, violations that I got tagged with after that because, you know, I got reported to every Alphabet Soup agency in the world. And uh, I only received two of the violations physically. The third one, for some reason, never made it to my mailbox. I received the one about the fence, about not having a permit for my fence, about not having a permit for my bathroom. I never received a notice about the violation for my business. So I never did anything about that. That didn't come up until the time, until the, the, we had everything lined up. The buyer's, the potential buyers were had their attorneys ready. They had their their bank ready. Their bank gave them the their the the, the uh, preliminary uh, what you call it commitment for the mortgage, and all that had to do was a title search had to be run, and that had to, as long as that was that came out okay, we were gonna the closing date was gonna be set. Unfortunately, when that happened, there was a. Um, what call it? That's when the building violation, uh, the business, the illegal business violation popped up, oh, which. Wow which I was originally told I didn't have to do anything about. I just had to wait until the title search was ran again. And then when it was, I was got, I got a panic, panic stricken text from my attorney saying I needed to take care of this immediately, which I did the very next morning. I called, had somebody talk to somebody. They agreed to come out the next morning to clear this violation. And then apparently that guy did that. But after he handed it off to his supervisor, who was the last chain, you know, who's the last person in line who had to sign off on it and then it would officially be cleared. It just sat on the on this guy's desk for two weeks. Excuse me. And they well, I didn't really do need anything. to get a cough button. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you probably you should work. You should work on that. Uh, <laughs> I'll put they, it on my uh, wish list. Someone can buy it. There you go. Yeah. They, Hashtag uh, please donate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. I just it's wanted like, to make sure I interrupted. Of course. Okay. So, so yeah. So apparently, it just sat on the supervisor's desk for two weeks, and in that time period, the con the contractor who I had hired to handle the permits for me went in and was told in a no certain term, in un in no uncertain terms, rather, that because the supervisor had not processed the the the, the, via the violation as cleared nothing could be done on the permits he was attempting to apply for so that could get taken care of as well Jesus. so he came back to me told me that i ended up getting in a fight with him because of because of the fact that he had just done nothing for th i found out he had done nothing with my 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 thing for three weeks like i could have found out this stuff weeks earlier if he had actually done the shit i had paid him for he had actually put my job off for three weeks i found out and i lost it on him and uh, my wife ended up uh, jen ended up smoothing that over with him <laughs> Uh, um, and got got him to admit that he was wrong, which was great. Um, and it got got it got him to agree to do the rest of the work without getting paid until the very end, which was not our original contract, um, but is also helpful. But anyway, um, so we, this could have happened earlier, but regardless, it was the town that was holding us up. So the supervisor tells my attorney one thing, the town tells my my contractor another thing. I just spoke to my attorney this morning, like I said, and it turns out that the supervisor was trying to insist that the only way that we could proceed was that if the buyers would were willing to sign a letter saying that they were going to buy the house without this stuff being taken care of, meaning technically they're on the hook for it, even though we could write a separate contract to state that you know, a separate deal with them saying, no, no, we're, I'm going to take care of this. There's going to be certain money held in escrow until this is finally finished. And then once it's done, you guys have permits They're in, you know, you're all taken care of, blah, blah, blah. But I paid for it, you know, whatever. Um, basically making all of us go through extra steps. But apparently the, the, the supervisor just straight up lied to my attorney because he told him like nothing else could be done. Meanwhile, the contractor's like, no, if the business violation is clear, the application should be able to start going through now which means we shouldn't have to go through all this stuff. So like, I still don't have an answer. I still don't have a closing date because the town is making us jump through so many goddamn hoops that the buyer may actually end up backing out of this deal. And I wouldn't blame them for it on, you know, as much as it'll kill me, I wouldn't blame them for it. Um, cause this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, it's just so, yeah, one the, thing after another. <laughs> oh, it's, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. And you the still have that ex- court thing going on too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'll get to that in a second. But I ex- <laughs> I, ex- I explained it in a recent um, a podcast I did and in a video that, that basically what I have done is abolitionist I abstractions. Through, by the way, uh, yes, thank you. Um, I have I have done uh, I, I have basically jumped through every hoop they've put in front of me. And as soon as I'm done jumping through that hoop, they look at me and go, "Why? No, this is the hoop you got to jump through." Like they're basically gaslighting me. Is what the whether it's intentional or not, like that's what it seems like to me. Is like there is basically gaslighting. It's like you need to do this. Okay, I go do this. Oh no, you didn't have to do this. This has to be done. It's like wait a minute, why did I have to do this? Oh, you didn't have to do that. You're the one who told me to do that. No, we didn't. Jesus. Like it, it. That's that's basically what it comes down to here, and it's been going on for months. And you know, I am now as of today now three months behind on my mortgage because I was told. Don't worry about paying it. We're going to be closing soon. You know, it takes six months for the bank to start foreclosure <laughs> proceedings against you. So you'll be fine. Um, oh, but the, the the bank, of course, the credit union, of course, is mad at me anyway because of the other issues I had with them where they alleged that I threatened them and then they closed all my accounts and then they finally locked my credit card down. Um, even though I had like $3,000 worth of credit still left on it. Um, they locked it down for pay. They locked it down for delinquent payments, even though I had spoken to their credit department a week beforehand and told them the situation. And they said, okay, you should be good for another month. We're going to note your account. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Cause I'm like, I just need to get to the sale of my house. And once that's done, not only will you have the minimum payment, I'll pay you in full. Like the credit card will be cleared. I'm going to pay off 20, four five thousand dollars whatever it is at this point i'm like the entire thing is getting paid off you like just you have to hang i mean you can check the house is under contract and they checked and like oh, okay yeah to- you're you're fine sir a week later they cut my card off anyway Jeez. <laughs> so it's just been like a nightmare and because the town's holding me up i literally like i have somebody willing to hand me money for my house where i will be able to pay off the bank for everything i owe them and pay off my car and like every other debt that I currently have and walk out of here with enough money to set my family up in the Midwest and have a, a security blanket for us for at least eight to 12 months, just in case Jen doesn't get set up with the, uh, the full-time job that she's looking at, that, that she's looking to do. Um, but I'm not allowed to touch it. <laughs> I can't get to it. Like part of it's actually sitting in an account that's my, in my attorney's, the escrow account my attorney controls. Um, like part of the money's there. I can't touch that either. <laughs> There's like twenty grand there. It's all waiting for me, but the town just will not let me touch it. It's insane. There's, I like I brought up the political targeting thing to my attor- to my real estate attorney multiple times, and he keeps trying. Like he's always. You know, him and I, you know, go way back. Obviously, we're semi, you know, we're quasi related. He's my cousin in law, um, but it's like my third cousin, her, her husband. Um, but I've known him my entire life because he's they've been married since I think before I was born um, and uh, or at least together since before I was born. And, uh, you know, he's also been my, my my criminal attorney in the past and he was my real estate attorney when I bought the house. Uh, he's also been my attorney for a bunch of other business things I've taken care of in the past. Um, he's kind of a jack of all trades. So like we go way back, but he obviously does not agree with my political views. And, uh, he thinks I'm being a little bit extremist in some of my things, <laughs> but every time I bring it up to him, he's like, Oh no, this is just the way the talent works. I'm like, really, man. I'm like, how in <laughs> like the other day I finally got him to admit that, okay, maybe, maybe you have a point because, <laughs> because he, he, he kept the whole time everything they threw at me he goes oh this is just normal he's like i deal with this all the time he's like i do real estate he's like i'm not a real estate attorney but i do this like i've done so many of these for the family over the years that everybody always asks me to do these that i have a lot of experience in real estate law around here um so you know he's like i know all the ins and outs i know how the town is with their with their stupidity and their incompetence and their attitude of we just don't give a fuck we'll get to it when we get to it he's like this is all he's this is all typical all typical like I said, a few days ago, finally, he was like, all right, you might have a point <laughs> because he's like, this is ridiculous. Even he's saying it's ridiculous now because it's like, what like, what else could I possibly do here? <laughs> I've jumped through every hoop. I don't know. <laughs> and they're literally giving us contradictory information right now. Like, that's the position we're at. Like, my my attorney is now 
well, I left him this morning with he was calling my he was going to call my contractor to try to get the full story from him and then call the supervisor again, um, which could take I, who knows how many days to get in touch with, because the same supervisor supervisor also actively ducked calls from Jen for like an entire couple of days a couple of weeks ago, even though she spoke to the secretary multiple times. And even the secretary sounded annoyed the last time after she realized that the guy still hadn't called her back. <laughs> Like, like she said, even the secretary apologized profusely. I was like, I don't understand why he's not calling you, you know, <laughs> like, um, so like I've just been screwed over so many fucking different ways in this situation. And yeah. And then there's the criminal situation, which is still not over. I don't even know what's going on with that because I had a two part pretrial hearing that was only supposed to be one part, but hell, everything with me is extended. So I've, I've now had 12 appearances in 12 months. Cause like I said, my arrest was, um, a, a year ago today so i had my arraignment on the second because yeah i got arrested at night so that my arraignment was the next morning um so technically 13 appearances counting the arraignment in 12 months um to the day <laughs> and uh no resolution as far as i know the next step was supposed to be trial but i don't know if like the very next appearance is like jury selection or whatever because during my very last appearance i was left from, with my attorney I heard the date that was being said that was that there was being scheduled for the next appearance, but there was just a whole bunch of a flurry of I don't know what at the end between the judge, the DA, my attorney, um, and then quick conferences with me, and then me being told to go wait, and then me being told to go wait again, and then me being told, okay, I'm going to call you later. I have to go do this one more thing, and then haven't hear not hearing from him for over a week. Um, <laughs> I, I don't actually know what the next appearance is supposed to be about all i do know is like i predicted he finally mentioned the rest of the money i'm going to owe him uh one because the whole thing is once jury selection happens is when his next payment kicks in uh which i've known the entire time and he's been doing his best to try to avoid that like trying to pressure them into giving you know we still didn't want to de you know make a deal but he kept trying to pressure them into doing the uh the acod thing which is basically just a uh a uh what you call it a, a slow-mo dismissal like eventually it becomes a dismissal um but they the da's office doesn't have to like give up right away basically they still have an opportunity for me to screw up in a six month time span to be able to you know to be able to nail me for this mm. um but they they haven't gone for it so even though in the in the very last appearance apparently the judge at, the judge requested a conference at the very end of the hearing between my attorney uh the da and herself in which she asked if there was a possible resolution to be reached before we proceeded any further um meaning that even the judge is like you know can we stop dragging this on at this point it's been a year like can we is there any way to get around wasting more time with the trial with this stuff um which to me sounded really weird because the judge could have dismissed this at any point like she has the power to do this Randy England actually asked me that. A couple of people who are either lawyers or have worked in the legal profession have asked me that. Have been like, why hasn't the judge dismissed this with prejudice yet? Like that's what it would have happened in there, huh? Because it's New York. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that because that is that's exactly that's exactly what happened when I brought this up to my lawyer. His 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 response was almost verbatim. That's just not how it works here. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it's exactly because it's New York. Yeah. So yeah, I hear there's so like a next... huge like ANCAP community out there, and they're everybody's always saying like, oh, you should move to New York, and then I'll go on their Facebook, and they're just constantly complaining about the MTA. <laughs> I'm just like, no, I don't want I don't want to live in a town where I'm relying on the MTA, and it sucks, well, that's the, and it's always that's... a giant mosh pit. No. Well, that's the that's 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 the Manhattanites. If you don't have, you know, I, I, I stay away from the even even ANCAP ones. I stay away from them because uh, I stay away from I stay away from New York City. I, I want nothing to do with that area. Um, and I don't have luckily I don't have to deal with the MTA like very, very rarely do I hop on the LIRR to go into the city if I have to do something um, or, you know, in a very rare occasion that I have to if I don't have a vehicle that I can take the train somewhere and get there easier i will but for the most part i can't even it's, it's probably been at least a couple of years since i've been on a train even the train much less the subway system jeez i yeah, ain't dealing pass. with that shit man 
pass. Yeah. Pass, 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 pass. I don't even want to go to L.A. Like, I, don't, I mean, I don't even want to visit L.A., let alone <laughs> live in L.A. I only drove – I drove through L.A. like a for a minute a couple of years back. And I wasn't even driving. I was sorry. So I, should, I was riding in a car. Well, of course, he, he, you're I, from New York. You, of course, you don't know how to drive. I was just like, <laughs> I just, yeah. I had no, I, I, I did, I had no intention of wanting to go back anytime soon. That's no. all I remember. <laughs> no, when you live there, I lived there for like nine months in Hollywood Hills. Hell no! I almost ran over Kathy Griffin a, Griffin a few times. Um, Going up and down that hill. Damn it, Jim. Why didn't you try harder? So close. So close. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. I just thought she was just an annoying comic. I didn't realize how terrible she was. Um, yeah, I used to see her running around, jogging around, going up to my. Come on. If, sudden, if suddenly, Su- if suddenly Susan did, was that, she was on that, right? If that's what I'm thinking. I don't know. I think she was on news radio. No. Yeah, she was that on wasn't news her. radio. Yes, yeah, she was. No, she Oh my God! When? Let me pull this up. Go on, go ahead. Say what you're going to say. She, Suddenly, Susan, go ahead. She, yeah, she. That's that's where I remember her her breakout thing being. Even though I didn't really watch that show, but if you didn't realize how horrible she was going to be through that, when was she on news radio? Could've Other than it. like a guest appearance? No, the redhead. That wasn't her. No, I swear that she was on there too. No. I was a huge news radio fan, man. Oh, I'll be damned. I was like, what am I? I could have swore that, I. S- that's she like what I was, was going to say. She probably was a guest. I was going to say, listen, I know I've smoked a lot of cannabis over the years since then, but I'm pretty sure I remember it because that was one of my favorite shows of all time. I was a huge fan of that. That's when I became a fan of Rogan. Um, I, I never wrong. watched. I never watched Kids in the Hall, but that's when I became a huge fan of oh. Dave Foley and, real, and realized what a genius <laughs> he fucking is. I used to love Kids in the Hall. Well, Still no, do. I went back yeah. and watched Kids in the Hall after after watching news radio. Here's are all um, the Daves I know. These are all the Daves. <laughs> and yeah, and like I said, that's when I realized the genius of Dave Foley. <laughs> um, Phil Hartman. I mean, like that that show was fucking amazing. Yeah, I was like, no, what Kathy Griffin was on that. She would she would have ruined it. She, she it would have been she would have been the Ted she would have been the Ted McGinley for that show. I mean, come on. Yeah. Well, I've, I've just but maybe it's because Andy Dick is on there, and I see them as like the same, just with shorter hair. <laughs> and he's a little taller. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. That's probably what it is. Just uh, Andy Dick's terrible too. I, okay. Yeah. I was. I was. I was. I was. I was about to. You know. I was kind of offended at first, but now I, I can kind of see that. All right. Okay. We'll, we'll let. We'll, we'll. We'll let you pass. <laughs> This is, this is a Mandela thing, right? I mean, I'm going to get some meta letters. I knew she was on there. Why is she on there? <laughs> this is a Mandela. Um, so, yeah, should we do... Um, is, that, is, that how, is that how those Mandela effect things work? Does yeah, somebody just create things. it on their own and go, crap, man? You I misremember sworn. things, and then other people misremember the same thing, and then they go, oh, it must be it must be a conspiracy. They're hiding it from us. Like the Bernstein the Bears, uh, Sinbad's... What was it, the movie that Sinbad was in? Allegedly. Okay, that one, that Shazam. one, cause, yeah, that one got me because I remember the Shaq one, but I also, when that first started getting floating around, my memories, like I pictured Sinbad in a fucking genie suit, and I was like, yeah, I totally remember this occur- this movie. I don't remember watching it, but I remember it when it was out. <laughs> <laughs> nope, never happened. Ah, so yeah. So should we do uh, Amazon orders? This one should be quick. People have been using the Amazon link lately. How I tried I to remember to use. I tried to remember to use it recently. Okay. I might be on there. Possibly, we'll find out. Let me make sure I got this right. Um, In- unless I'm banned from you, the way everybody else was banned from using <laughs> mine, apparently. Well, it would say on there on the ordered items, and I got 22 ordered, and then also earnings, and everything's showing up. So nope, not- not- none of that stuff happened. This, I think it happened once. On the previous one, I just didn't talk about it. Um, what the hell was that? Oh, later. I forgot to unplug it. Oh, I better not say that word out loud so we can hear. Anyways, um, so I'm just gonna briefly talk about the ones that aren't that really that interesting. So someone bought some LED shop lights, uh, uh, a blower, like a, like a high velocity blower fan, some Pampers. Uh, uh, a senior cat litter box, and some of a voltmeter. Oh, I guess it's kind of interesting. Kind of like one of those Wheatstone Bridge 
ohm meters thing and some some parts for it some 100 packs of matches um a rubber wrap uh, wrench set which is kind of interesting some fasteners some stuff for a camel you know what a camelback is right a camelback? Yeah, it's those little water reservoirs that you put on your back, and it has, comes in a little strong. Oh, little yeah, yeah. I was like, camelback, sure, that's the that's the ski mountain I grew up on in Pennsylvania. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I know. It, yeah, I've, I've seen those. Yeah, and then some stuff for something that's coming up, I guess. So that's a strainer for uh, a deep fryer. Someone bought a deep fryer and some some oil dispose uh, bags to dispose oil in. Uh, Hamilton oh, wait Beach a minute. deep wait fryer. A <laughs> Wait a minute! You're you're supposed to dispose those things in bags? Allegedly, I don't, I don't know. I just because 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 I never I never never emptied my deep fryer next to my garage for years. <laughs> I put them like I have Arizona water jugs that I rotate every once in a while for for using water, and once I think it's getting too old, uh, I'll just put my deep fryer oil in that. I haven't used my deep fryer in a while though. Um, sh- should you then know. what do you do with that? Then what do you do with that jug of oil? Throw it out? Yeah, just throw it in the trash. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah I, so I, I just, do with I, just sk- I just skip that. I just skip that whole process. Just dump it out in the yard. <laughs> Allegedly, as, as long as it's not uh, motor oil, I don't think they have, will have a problem with it. Well, like I said, it was on my property, number one, and number okay. two. It's it's not like it seemed to kill the vegetation because if anything, the vegetation on the side of the garage, which there's like a maybe. I guess a two foot me like a two yeah maybe maybe a two foot gap um between my house uh between the garage and the fence that's my neighbor's fence so it butt you know butts up right against their yard um and there's like a little section that's cut off there but the vegetation if anything tripled in growth after I started doing that because <laughs> my neighbor would you know at least a couple times a year would ask me because it's I probably all it down yeah it's all plant food anyway it's all plant yeah, exactly. dead plants anyways because I'm sure yeah. you you weren't buying like beef tallow. To- <laughs> oh, no, I was I was using I was using back, yeah, yeah. back when I was using my fryer. I was frying in vegetable oil. Yeah. So yeah, all that stuff. And then someone also bought like one of those little strainer ladle things that go for with mm-hmm. it. I can close that one. Close that one. Um, blah blah blah. Someone bought. I don't. I think I don't think this is a good idea. But you know, if it works, whatever. An Orbit Beehive Smart Indoor Outdoor Six Station Wi Fi Sprinkler System Controller, compatible with Alexa. Put it in here. Whoa. Uh, I think this is a bad bad idea. <laughs> if it works for you, Wait fine. It seems like a great way to like get your sprinkler system hacked, so that people. Will this is a sprinkler system for your beehive. Is that what it's said? No. <laughs> or, is it, well, or is that the company name? That's the name of the the product. The name of it's called a beehive uh, Wi-Fi controller thing. B H Y V E. I don't like sprinkler. the idea of my sprinkler system being hooked up to Wi-Fi. Even though maybe I could turn on the sprinkler from my phone, which is what the little picture is depicting. I don't think that's a good idea. I think it's a great way for someone to hack your sprinkler system and just turn it on full blast all the time. Mm. Yeah. Or turn or or you know turn, turn it, it off during the summer and then you never notice that it's on. Or just, just watch or, everything. Or, die. Or, or, or a really great troll to uh, you know have you know have somebody hack it and then figure out your schedule and then turn it on <laughs> turn it on when you come home every day from work. Or someone just <laughs> or sitting you outside running, your or house. No. Or, or or when you or when you're no you just you know oh my you god get somebody, you get somebody's house is it that's it that's in like a regular pattern and you just someone get them please when they, hack this thing when you, yeah exactly <laughs> get, actually even better on the way to work in the morning you know when they're headed out to their car running yeah. late, you know have it go off just then <laughs> someone's sitting outside your house like there he is <laughs> <laughs> son of a bitch. Well, like I said, if if you can hack it, you don't even have to sit outside. You just have to do a little scouting to figure out when when they're normally running out around the time of the house, and then just yeah, all right, just set it off then. Because most people aren't gonna ch- most people aren't gonna look outside their front door if they're running out the house to go. Like especially if it's a nice day, if they're running out the house to get to, to late for work, and they know the sprinkler is normally scheduled to go off at say three o'clock in the afternoon when nobody's home, um, then they, they're not gonna bother to look outside to yeah. see if that's going <laughs> off. So they're just gonna run. You don't have to even be there. <laughs> I'd much rather like be there and just watch. And, oh, like, of turn course. Other things on like oh, the kids are playing in the yard. Turn it on. <laughs> All right. Well, they send it back. So, yeah, I would see. I would actually want to hack my own to do that to my own kids. That, that makes probably makes me a horrible father. But whatever. Uh, 
please someone hack this thing so I can find out like neighbors that have it. <laughs> Just fuck with them. And they would never know it was me because they don't even know me. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely de- uh, invest in a deep fryer, though. That's a, that's a good move. Someone bought. Uh, let's talk about this one first. The Magician of the Gods by Graham Hancock. Do you know what this is? Is that a novel? Yes. Okay. Is it? This is the first. This is the. This is the second one, right? It's not the first the best-selling one. Best-selling author, Fingerprints of the Gods. Yes. Yeah. I. I'm. A, I'm. I'm a big Graham Hancock fan, actually. <laughs> I okay. dig him. I don't know what He's, this is. It's it's a follow. Well, his book, the first one, Fingertips of the Gods, basically laid out what he's kind of it's it, it, this this uh, alternate uh, idea of history, like kind of what he saw through his interpretation of the readings that he had done and the other people he had talked to and stuff like that. And he had been largely left out of the uh, like archaeological and, um, you know, the mainstream science community. He, you know, constantly got laughed out as a kook. And when he came out with this book, it was wildly popular with conspiracy theorists and whatnot. Um, and, you know, it, it's a pretty, you know, it, he sold a lot of copies of it. I mean, I read it and, uh, and I, I, I kind of dug it. Um, but he, uh, he, he's been, he'd been preaching this stuff for a long time. And then, uh, he, like I said, he's always made fun of. And then a few years back when the shit at Gobekli, I can never say it right, Gobekli Tepe, the place in Turkey that got uh, unearthed um, uh, like five, five, maybe more years ago, they, they, they started unearthing that. Um, all of this stuff that he's been talking about for years, everybody was like, well, a lot of people were like, oh, fuck dude is right like there was this <laughs> there was this advanced civilization way before people are talking about humans being civilized like this huge fucking structure just been sitting here underneath turkey all this fucking time like way more advanced like the the the, the size of these uh um like the pillars and these stones the, like makes what the, they did with the pyramids look like uh child's play oh shit almost it's like fucking insane um like how the fuck did they do this shit? <laughs> like, how was this done? Um, but anyway, so yeah, this is the follow up. I still haven't got around to reading this. I'm so far behind on my reading list. But yeah, Graham's an interesting dude. Um, well, Rogan about has the audio book version of it. So, if, nice. Yeah, that'll, that'll, there's audio. I, I I don't I don't even have money for audio books at this point. I wasted. I finally <clears throat> used my free Audible one. Like you know, when you when you sign up, you oh, get yeah, a free yeah. one. I finally used that on uh, Scott Horton's book. Um, oh, Fool's, Fool's Aaron, Aaron yep. which was I, I don't normally read stuff like that, but man, that was a fucking amazing, yeah, awesome book. Highly recommend anybody I who hasn't read. I think that, I may end up doing something with him and Jared LaBelle soon. I don't know. This is this is all speculation at this point. That right. would be. That but would I'm, be awesome. I'm really cautious about always saying like, oh, I'm going to do something with this person. Like I won't even do that with co-hosts. I'll be like, I'm planning on recording with Jeremy. We'll see if it works. Because there's been many times where I was like, I'm recording with MK. And then MK is like, oh, I can't make it. So uh, I'm not saying that she does it a lot. I think she didn't only did it once. But there was a time where I was like, I, I announced it. It was going to be her first appearance. And then she couldn't make it. <laughs> I was like, fuck, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> so I'm always at this oh, no, point I'm... now. Like anytime I'm getting ready to do something, I'm like, I may do something. I don't know. But um, that's all signs oh, look that's... like it's going to happen. So we'll see. Well, that'll be awesome. Well, yeah. num- number one, I'm I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah, speaking of, speaking of not saying not saying you're you know definitely going to do doing something. I still plan on being in Michigan for the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. Yeah, um, I, would I, ha- like I have to make that. I, I don't think I, I, I will. I, I have tickets already. Like I okay. bought tickets for the for the entire family. But depending on what happens with this court situation, I don't know. I still don't know. Um, because to quickly go back to that, the one thing I did find out through all of this is that. If, you know, if this finally goes through trial if, and I end up getting found guilty, you know, despite all the evidence seeming to be in my favor, like even the videotape, the clear, which is clearly doctored, you know, like all this stuff, um, you know, I should win in a just system. But of course, this is not a just system. Number no, one. it's Num- the government. Yeah. Number two, you know, the <laughs> most likely the, the most likely scenario, even if found guilty for me, because I have no record whatsoever, is um, is probation. The one thing I learned is that, unfortunately, misdemeanor probation which is what I would be getting is not transferable. Whereas felony trans uh, felony probation is. So if I had murdered or raped or like actually stolen something from somebody and and got convicted of a felony, I could have my probation transferred to pretty much any other state. But because of this little bullshit, 
I'm not allowed. I wouldn't be allowed to. So I may actually be forced to stay here even longer. God. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. You better um, get some video games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I'm, so anyway, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm planning to be in Michigan, um, and Scott Horton's going to be there. So my plan was to grab him for a quick talk you know, to introduce myself in person um, because I did like, I've gotten a bunch of bigger name interviews recently for my own shows um, through like other friends who've been like, Hey, I, you know, I, I'm going to, you know, they're like, I'm recording with this person. You want me to mention you? And I'm like, sure, go for it. And they do. And then the person's like, Hey, I'll do an interview with you. I'm like, great. Yeah. I like <laughs> so when I people to, reach I, out to me. I, I really don't like reaching out to other people for doing, yeah, it. even though well, I got so, a podcast for, for interviews specifically. Yeah, me too. So, and <laughs> some of them have reached out to me. I'm just like, okay, we'll work out something. Well, that, well yeah, exactly. So, far, so nothing, come, nothing's so, actually worked out. It's always been like, oh, something happened. Sorry. But, you know, when you deal with people like this, a lot of them do kind of get wrapped up in things like, oh, shit, I got something really important to do. I'm like, go and do that. I'm not important. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. No, I, well, never, so like, pl- I never get mad or anything. I'm just like, oh, no, no, go ahead and do that. Don't even trip. Oh, oh so, yeah, I'm, I'm the yeah. Sa- I'm the same way. But well, yeah. So that anyway, so that's my plan with Horton is to actually meet him in person and then hopefully get him to sit down, you know, do yeah. at least a TED because I'm bringing all my equipment with me. If if I make it there, I, I brought all my equipment last year. I never used it. This year, I actually I even bought a new mic. So now I finally have two mics. So yeah. <laughs> I'm actually going to try to do like on scene um, interviews like uh, Lou did last year. Yeah. Although I don't think he ever I don't think he ever published most of those. He did a whole crap load of interviews. Um, with pretty much every all the big speakers, Dude, Lou needs to do his own podcast. He had he, he finally had a domain set up. He just he never got around to doing it. Oh jeez. Um, I, he has I would subscribe like, to that in a heartbeat. Fucking yeah, me too. Great. Yeah. Well, he's he he's done a bunch of solo shows recently. Um, that have been one that have been awesome. Oh, uh, you know, solo fiend shows that have been wonderful. So like he's done at least three or four of them, I think, in the past couple of months. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so he's done 80 straight minutes of because we're not, we're not on the radio. Any, I mean, we're on the radio, but we're not live anymore. So um, really? Oh, yeah. These aren't live oh, yeah. anymore. Nah, yeah. About a month, a uh, couple of month and a half, maybe two months ago at this point. Wow. You just can't get people to go on that late at night anymore. Well, no, it just it ended. Yeah, it ended up that. Uh, well, no, th- there was enough fiends. But uh, like we were still we were still pulling it off. But uh, apparently we, we found out that of all the stations we were still on, like it had dwindled down to like 20 or something. Mm. Uh, all but one of them was only playing us on the weekends anyway. So we were basically doing the full four nights for one station. And those other shows were only getting heard on the podcast anyway, unless the people on that one, in that one state on that one station were listening okay. <laughs> live. So it was like, all right, I'm sure no it was the in... Wyoming station, right? Yeah. So, yeah no so, one's listening to that. Yeah. <laughs> no one lives so, in Wyoming. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's like, all right, it doesn't make sense to do that anymore. So we started doing, we just started doing podcasts. So now we can, re- now we record whenever. And, I think we were only putting out two shows a week. Now we're put. We're supposed to start putting out three again soon. But apparently, I'm the only one consistently doing a show because, other than you know having no money, um, I have nothing else to do but sit in my house. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, you want to record a show? If my kids aren't here, sure, we'll record a show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I was like, I better grab Jeremy because I don't know how long this is going to last before you end up go, going off and living in a van down by the river, like uh, like Nick. Um, which, which, by the way, that's been that's been like pulling teeth in order to get him back on. <laughs> well, he's he's disappeared from everything. He yeah. uh, he he retired. He retired. He he like almost a fi- you know he officially retired from the fiends again, and then uh, he even his la- his last uh, yakking with Nick podcast. He he said that he was he was gonna be pretty probably be done. <laughs> mm. You know, because the farming thing and everything else. But he likes yakking, being but... he likes being on the wall. But it's like there's I mean Matt says that he's retired from everything from you because he was a YouTuber. A vlogger, um, and he's like, "Nope, this is the only thing I do now." It's Lulberts. Um Seamus has just like been impossibly busy to do anything except for spend every waking second working on Freedom Tunes because he said himself a ridiculous but good not because I I have a ridiculous uh, schedule too for podcasting, which is every day. <laughs> uh, but you know, like he puts far more effort into his videos than I put into my daily podcast. <laughs> probably even more than this podcast but um and then uh 
then Bab, I think Bab wants to quit. I don't know because every time I try to contact him for something, it just goes on unheard. So either that or he quit Facebook and I just didn't realize it because I'm on Facebook for the most part. I don't know. Maybe I have to find a way, another way to get a hold of him. We'll see. Um, but I want to get him and, and, and Steve, uh, Steve on at the same time. You know, the old Fiend Dream Team. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Oh, and there's one more, one more thing on this Amazon list, which is, <laughs> which probably could spur another conversation for an hour. Uh, Mulan Labe by Boston Tea Party, and <laughs> I'm, nice. I'm, I'm sure it's a good book. I've heard nothing but good things by people I trust. All say this book is good, but that book cover is fucking ugly. <laughs> I'm sorry, it is. It's bad. Um, Boston Tea Party is a great author. I know that. Uh, I haven't read this one, but yeah, I still haven't read that either. Yeah, read read excerpts of it, but haven't actually gotten around to the whole book. Yeah, the, the book is like it's it's got the the black and yellow anarchy flag type thing, but it says Mulan Labe, and then there's like this light gray text that that literally is is like like a is snaking. Someone just figured out how to use the warp text feature on uh, Photoshop <laughs> the first time. <laughs> It's really bad. It's really bad. And there's like a little red kind of anarchy thing kind of going on the bottom too. So I don't know. And there's like four different fonts being used. Uh, <laughs> this is bad graphic design. <laughs> <laughs> this is just really, really bad. Uh, yeah, Boston. If you ever write another book, Kenneth, is it Kenneth Royce? If you ever write another book, uh, you better get a hold of um, Kevin Slaughter. This is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> He'll make it look good. But that's it. That's it for Amazon. Yep. So uh, anything else you want to talk about? Sir, did we miss anything? Anything fun? No. I think we... Uh... Yeah. I mean, the alt-right's dead, so that kind of talking point's done. Um Oh well, yeah, the alt rights that I don't know. I was I was listening to James's podcast yesterday. <laughs> he had somebody else who claims to be for the post right. Yeah, I'm post right uh, too. Oh, is that I? I don't. I I've 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 only heard you mention it. I think once. Other than that, I didn't know it was really a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's not really a thing. <laughs> it's, there's no real like objective. Well, then again, they don't really believe in objectivity either. But there's no real like clear definition of what it is it's just kind of like it's people who kind of came from the right or still kind of identify with more on the right when it comes to like economic stuff uh but reject a lot of the kind of conservative kind of viewpoints that it also represents as well so oh yeah so then i guess or, and they're also like, open to maybe more left leaning things uh economically i don't um uh, but some of them do so it's not like any a real clear. It's it's all it's just like the post left doesn't have any real kind of clear definition of what it is as well. So, yeah, oh, it's kind of yeah. the same thing. Gotcha. Yeah. So I guess I, I guess I would qualify somehow, some way. Yeah. yeah Whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah, you have like egoist leanings. So it's a good chance. Yeah. That's like one of their main kind of things. It's like, well, it's the right and Sterner. I would, yeah, that that makes sense because that whole conversation that James had with those two, whatever the hell the names were, yeah. uh, was very <laughs> um, was the Sterner and the word spook was yeah. mentioned quite a bit, and kind of, and also, it seems like there's also a the theme with with a lot of them is like the kind of rejection of Austrianism for things like Chicago School or. Yes, yes, they were very, they were very down on these. Those two in particular were very down on the Austrian school and and caps in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm down on and caps, even though I, I technically am an and cap. I just don't like that label because I I, th- I have a real big problem with the term uh, capitalism. But that's 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 a whole thing. <laughs> I don't want to get. Yeah, into we could. We, yeah, we could actually we could actually go down a very long road on that because I I too have had a, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a, a where I used to tout it a lot, I definitely have a lot. It's, it's, uh, but, but before it's, anybody as starts, the, as the kids say, me. problematic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as, as the weird looking kids with a, with a big hoop holes in their ears and, and multicolored hair and do things for bullyhunters.org, uh, would say it's problematic. Uh, but, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like before anybody starts accusing me of being a socialist, it's just, I agree with what you would what what you call capitalism. Like I agree with that. 
I just don't think that that really is what capitalism is to most people. And that's a term that I don't want to try to reclaim. That's pretty much at the end of it. Yeah. Like I have free markets. Yes. Free markets. Yes. Markets. Yep. Yes. Private yeah. everything. Yes. yes. Um, capitalism. Yes. Mm, I don't like it the term, yeah. but if that's what you call it, sure. Yeah, if that's your, if that's your, if, if if free markets and voluntary interactions is your definition of capitalism, fine. Yeah, that's, sure. That's fine. Let's go with yeah. that. I'm just not going to say that to other people. <laughs> you know, unless they unless I identify as a capitalist and I'll be like, well, I'm a capitalist. I'm just more capitalist than thou. You know. <laughs> but for the most part, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So yep. Yeah, um. So yeah, if you want us to. Uh, to go on about what kind of stupid shit you're buying. And please, for the love of God, buy more butt stuff. I don't know what happened. It was just a, a fluke. Someone bought like a really cool butt thing a while back. And I've been waiting for another butt thing to happen, and it's just not happening. Was that the Clarissa Explains Butt Stuff episode? Yeah, that was the only reason why we called that episode that. It was it was yes. complete. It was fraud. It was, <laughs> it was podcasting fraud. Everybody thought we were going to talk about butt stuff, and we didn't. The only thing we did was go, oh, someone bought butt stuff. The end. That was the whole butt stuff conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes these ideas they fall a little flat. Yeah. Someone bought butt stuff. The end. <laughs> oh, you listening for that? <laughs> Psych. Yeah. yeah. If you want, if you want to hear about butt stuff, you need to go listen to Iconis Ass. That's where butt stuff is happening <laughs> right now. Apparently, uh, James Weeks talks about man thongs. That's about as close as you get with Wolberts. Sorry. <laughs> yeah so uh what do you what are you doing what, what 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 do you got to plug oh yeah yeah sorry i fucking buried the lead yeah if, if you want if you want to buy it stuff and have us talk about it store.lowberts or shop.lowberts.com store.lowberts.com is where you buy uh shirts i think it's wish.lowberts.com where you can see my amazon list or maybe that's wish.jimjesus let's double check that go ahead where do you what are you plugging Oh, I guess just the usual for me. The uh, uh, solpodcast.org is where most of my stuff can still be found. If you're on, if you're on Steam, it uh, I put all my stuff out there first. Um, and my I've actually been making a little more money these days. Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm getting like I'm up to like the four or five dollar post level. you know, almost 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 consistently. So you know, working my way up there. Um, but I, I still have a bunch of friends over there. I make a ton of money. <laughs> So I figure if I'm going to put content out, I might as well try to put it out there first. Um, otherwise, if you want to, if you want to donate to me, we got a Patreon, SOL Patreon, SOL. Uh, it's, it's I think uh, Seize the Liberty, patreoncom slash Seize the Liberty. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Or the or you know, I'm still I'm still on the fiends, but you know, I don't sh I don't show up with regularity anymore. It's just you know, every once once or twice a week, I have a show that's put up there. But you know, what are you gonna do? Yep. All right, so I created, yeah. I guess I didn't have a wish.lowberts or anything, so I created that. The only thing that's on there is just things that I probably want for the show and a couple of pizzas, pizza steals, but, yeah. Don't expect anybody to buy me a $400 mic. <laughs> if someone does, <laughs> fucking, all right. But, then, oh, they have to buy a preamp for that thing. Yeah, so don't buy that microphone for me. So yeah, I would, I would, I, I, I used to say stuff like that. Like, I don't think anybody would, but recently, because of my situation, um, uh, I had a, I, I threw a go, GoFundMe up there because I was kind of screwed for money, and I was like, you know, when the when the bank cut me off with the credit card, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, luckily I got a, a bunch of money thrown my way that was able to hold me over for at least for now. But uh, I have one there's one person out there that I you know I I knew of we had interacted a little bit, but apparently is is a very big fan of my work. I just like kept throwing like big chunks of crypto at me allegedly, um, <laughs> and was just like. Yeah, uh, I'll have some more soon. I'll let you know. And I'm like, but but no, I I didn't. You know, you're, thanks. You, you, I'm good. But you know, um, so yeah, it's possible, man. Somebody may buy it. Some there, there may be some secret admirer of yours out there that'll be like, oh, four hundred dollar mic. That's no problem. I can do that. Yeah. Well, if I had to get the three hundred dollar mic, I don't. I don't need it. I'll just remove it. Just get rid of that. Oh, uh, let's see. I have I have like some M discs. Um, the JFK book, reclaiming history. Um, and the, and the camera. Because if I if I get a camera, I could start doing video stuff again. But what kind of camera? Like a, it's a DSLR, but it does like uh like 4K ah. video, which is it's probably the best thing to do for for videos, unless you want to get like a professional grade camera. 
It's like, you no, know, just get a $400 DSLR. And that way I could just take it with me. Uh, like some USB cables and a Raspberry Pi. I got a pizza Bible. Uh, but for the most part, like if, if I expect anything to anybody to get me anything, it'd be like M discs. Because what I really want to do, and which is what I will do, is once I hit the, once we get to 100 episodes, I'm going to take, I, by then I have already done my 365 days of daily podcasts. And I'm going to put all of the driving episodes and all the all the extra stuff that I've done and all the Lulbert stuff and you know all the 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 files that i have for 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 the for the flags that i've ever created all of them i'm gonna put them all on an m disc and uh basically pass them out to people who have certain amount of uh uh, of uh, patreon support so but i won't talk about that until i get to 100 (laughs) once i get to 100 i'll probably have all the information for that but you'll have lulbert's uh, on 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 uh, on a disc that will last a thousand years. So yeah. that's a uh, how much do those things go for? <laughs> what, what M discs? It'll be yeah. on M disc Blu-ray. Um, so oh, the price price dropped on them. So they're like fifty five bucks for a spindle of twenty five, and they, they oh, hold okay. about twenty five gigs, or a five pack for fifteen bucks. So oh, that's not that bad. Yeah, but M discs are crazy. Like they they're literally made out of stone. And you're basically burning the information into stone, and they claim a thousand years, and uh, I don't think they've been around for a thousand years, so it's really kind of hard to say like it's one thousand years for sure. But you know, yeah. Or maybe someone will buy me some Tabasco scorpion sauce. I've been dying to try that, but I just don't want to pay for the shipping. <laughs> it's ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> to pay like almost as much for the hot sauce for the shipping. But I fucking love me some scorpion sauce. And I love Tabasco. Why not both? Porque no los dos. I don't like Tabasco, man. <sighs> You're wrong. I You're try, just I try. I don't know. I try. I, I, lo- I love hot sauce. I just Tabasco just never does it for me. Although there, I do have one The habanero one, reason- one is great. Well, the, I do well, yeah. I, th- there, there is one recently that's made with Tabasco, the, the, a local place that usually does like they're big for their apple cider and stuff. Mm. Um, oh, and my, uh, my Tabasco and apple there. cider? Well, apparently, well, they had they do a bunch of stuff like that, like they do pumpkin pies and stuff like that around the holidays. It's, I, I think they have an, a small orchard behind, like they have this little roadside stand or whatever. But anyway, um, they're fa- they're famous around here for that. My kids and Jen love to go there. But apparently, one time they were in there talking to the owner, and he's got this old little line of his own stuff that he puts out as as, as well as the other stuff that everybody else buys. And among the things was hot sauces. Mm. And just because just because Jen happened to look at one, like he's like he thought she wanted it, and she was, he she kept trying to explain that it was for me, and he kept just like winking at her, like no, no, I understand, you know, like me, you know, I don't know why, but anyway, um, it was actually it's actually really good. And it, it, when I first looked at, it, I was like, oh, it's made with Tabasco. I'm like, god damn it. <laughs> um, but I enjoyed that one. Um, I can't remember the name of it offhand. Yeah, my my daily driver hot sauce. Um, I've been using a lot of the super hot crystals. Um, it's pretty good. But you, it's only good if you get the super hot. The regular stuff, it tastes good, but it's not spicy at all to me. But I have a really high standard. But my daily driver, the one that I use all the time, is called Melinda's Naga Jalokia. And Naga Jalokia is in the same family as ghost peppers. They're just a little bit, like a slightly more mild. Um, but it's in the same lineage. So it's it's it, like if you ate a ghost pepper and a Naga Jalokia, you're you're not going to really notice too much of a difference because you're just it's just searing pain, <laughs> just for whatever. But that's my daily driver. I use it every day, and it's cheap. That's why I buy it, and it's good. But it's also cheap, and it's really 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 hot. So it gets my endorphin my endorphin addiction under 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 control. I currently don't have a daily driver. Yeah, I have like I have like five things that I rotate between just because people have given me stuff like. Um, one of my sister's friends, brothers, apparently, like he, I knew, I knew he was kind of like hippie-ish and was growing his own garden and stuff. But apparently, he started making his own hot sauces, and uh, he has like a ghost pepper one that he made, um, got like an orange, um, like a citrusy flavor to it too. Um, I kind of dig that one, but it's not something I want. Like he only gave me a little sample of it, and I also don't want to. Like it's not something I would use on everything right now. <laughs> um, I I still have a bot- I still have sriracha that I like to put. You know, every once like especially like pizza like. Co- Day, day old pizza and sriracha for some reason fruit with me is a, is a wonderful thing um and then like my, my a friend of mine years ago used to make his own wing sauce like he started out making his own yeah, i um, make my own wing sauce 
Yeah, he he tried. He started out making his own wing sauce, and eventually it turned into like an all-purpose hot sauce that uh, he was selling for a while. Um, so I had like bottles and bottles of this crap laying around for a while, and uh, I think I still have some of that, like the last batch of the the hot version of that that he put out before he's uh, before he stopped making it. Hmm. Um, and probably a couple, and, and like the the one from the apple cider place, and maybe one other. But and they're and they're all good in their own ways. But I'm just like, eh, I don't reach for the same one every time, you know. Yep. So anyway. So yep. So if you want to buy me hot sauce and M discs, <laughs> if you buy me an M disc, I'll I'll burn you a, a for free. I guess that's the least I can do apparently, um, <laughs> or a camera or whatever. Um, I don't expect any of you to buy anything for me. Um, I'm not. This is, this, is just, this is just like, this is just shit that I want. <laughs> I put it in my wish list and I'm like, I don't care if anybody sees it. I'm eventually going to buy the pizza Bible no matter what. Cause I have, I have a digital copy and it's fucking amazing. And I'm actually making a Chicago style pizza tonight for work. I'm just, and I bought like pizza boxes and I'm, I'm getting to uh. get back into really getting into like, seriously learning how to do pizzas and do it right. I'm just like forgetting everything that I thought I knew starting over from scratch and I'm getting some like didastic malt so I can, so I can do it right. So, mm. yep. Now I'm, now I'm hungry, man. Yep. <laughs> well, you're in New York, so you can go get a proper slice. Yeah. Apparently. But- yeah, but no, see, you mentioned Chicago. We've had this discussion. I, I am New York, and I, de- I defend New York pizza to most, to pretty much, against pretty much everybody. However, I do, uh, I, I do have a, a thing for Chicago style anyway. It's, it's, it, 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 given all choices, pizza that would probably be, it would be my preference. <laughs> so one of my work was like, that's just lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't argue. <laughs> Except you're using dough instead of pasta. Yeah. Yeah, it's all the same thing. Yeah, it's all the same thing. It's got corn in it. <laughs> yeah, so all right. So yeah, quick plug. Where can they where can they find your stuff? SOL podcast? Oh yeah, S O L podcast.org or I'm on Steam it. Yeah. And it doesn't violate the nap anymore. No, the the, the website's great. Yeah. Uh that, 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 that all all hail Paulie Paul Gordon for pulling us out and yeah. helping us out with that. And they link our stuff on there too. So, yeah, we, uh, I, I actually, I run, you know, I think the Fiends runs through there. The Lowboards runs through there. My buddy Danilo shows runs, runs through there. And my buddy Merrick's show used to run through there. He, he's allegedly bringing it back, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I, uh, we try to let that, that was actually Paul's idea too. I was like, he asked me, I was like, yeah, man, if, I didn't even know it was an option. I'm like, you can run other people's feeds for us too. Sure, yeah. go for it. I'm I, like, I see I'm my sure. stuff on iState TV. Um, that's Paul Gordon's. Uh, Yep. Thing, he doesn't do Lolzilla anymore. I don't think does he. I've been kind no, of with that. No, we, we're slowly bringing that. There's a Lolzilla theme to his Tuesday shows, which is today. And actually, I think I'm supposed to be on tonight. Should oh, I should probably shit. check with that. Yeah, um, I should probably check with that. You should um, go see Infinity but, uh, War and then go check on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, for, first, first, <laughs> for, first, I have to first I have to go hang out with my kids for a little while. Okay. Since, you know, I only I only get to see them during the day now. Um, and then, uh, you know, after they leave, we can, we can worry about me see, maybe seeing infinity war or they, see again, if I see it without Jen, she'll probably kill me too. So this is, this is going to be tough, man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, solpodcast.org, right? Yep. That's okay. the, that's the main site. And the link will be in the description as usual. Anytime I, you have you on, I link that site too. I should probably go back and check on some of those other links <laughs> from the older shows and make sure that they're right. Cause it's probably still linking back to the, the nap offending one. That's yeah, still around. That, 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 I, f- I found that when I when I was putting all of the SOL stuff up on D Tube over on Steam, it is all I had to, I had to redo all our old show notes because they all went to the old dead site. Yeah, so buy stuff through Amazon for us. I'd rather, much rather have that than stuff in other stores. And then I can use that to buy my pizza. pizza, pizza. <laughs> my pizza and baking skills. All right, man. Great having you on again. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hell Thanos. <laughs>